Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Uh, Mr. Fields, prior to today's meeting, circulated draft minutes from last month's meeting. Have, have uh, the commissioners had an opportunity to review? Yes. Is there a motion regarding approval? No, to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, we've got several complaints um, before us today. I've, I've talked with Mr. Fields uh, about taking some of the faster matters uh, up first. We're going to start with pedal vehicles. Uh, we've been asked to review a request from Nashville Pedicab for a name change to Nashville Bar Bike and with a new address for operations, Mr. Fields? Uh, as you recall, they appeared before the commission and requested to convert from a, petty, uh, from a pedal cab company to a pedal carriage. You approved that. They're now asking to be able to change their name and uh, formally change their name as well as the, uh, uh, the address. It would, it would be appropriate and in order. No reservations about the name bar in there? After I, all the discussions we can call we it have? whatever we want to call it, but it's uh, okay. it's it's certainly rolling down. I'm not sure it's any worse than calling one a tavern. So <laughs> all right, make motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next we have um, uh, under wrecker and towing services, we've been asked to review. Uh, a request to, for an address change for Advanced Towing and Recovery, LLC. Uh, both companies are uh, non-consent. Uh, both of them are in compliance. Uh, I do want to do one final inspection uh, on both of them, but uh, pending the final inspection, it, it was appropriate for approval, I think. You're talking about Ed, for Copeland's Towing and Recovery? Copeland's and Advanced. I was just okay. speaking about both of them. Mr. Copeland is present if we need to ask him any questions. I'm not sure. Uh, that we have. Is anyone here from Advanced? I'm not. And uh, it was we didn't ask them to. But again, what this is, is because they're not consent. We have to inspect the lots and that sort of thing. And I would just want to do a final button. But I, again, I think they're probably ready to go. Make a motion to approve both uh, requests for address changes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, we have a driver application under Wrecker and Towing Services uh, for Roy, excuse me, Roy D. Porter. Mr. Porter, Rory, Roy Porter. Uh, this was deferred from last month's meeting. Anybody heard anything from Mr. Porter? I talked to him on the phone. He was going to be here. Do you want to push it to the back end? Yeah, it was kind of on the back end. Yeah, yeah, we'll defer to the end of the meeting. Uh, we also have a company application for an other passenger vehicle for hire uh, for two companies, A and H Black Car Service and Holland Beck and Sons LLC. Mr. Uh, both of them have uh, filled out the appropriate material, provided the, the documentation needed, and uh, are ready to go to work. Recommend approval. Yes. Make a motion to approve the applications for A and H Black and Holland Beck and Sons. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have an address change request under other passenger vehicle for hire uh, for Angelo's Limo Service. Um, is everything in order with that request, Mr. Fields? It is. They, again, anytime there's a change to the face of an application, they have to have a uh, approval of the commission. 
and it's in order. There's a motion to approve the address change for Angela's Women's Service. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right, we will now move to the uh, complaints that are on the agenda today. Um, I'll ask my fellow commissioners if they'll remind me about Mr. Porter's application that, that we not forget to take that back up at the end. So we have uh, a number of complaints. Some of them uh, have been deferred to March in case any of the audience members have an older agenda. The complaints involving uh, Nashville Animal Advocacy have been moved to the March meeting. So we'll take the um, first complaints on the agenda I have here are the ones by American Melody Carriages and Melody Robinson against Sugar Creek Carriages. Ms. Robinson, uh, if you will, um, I'm going to place you under oath here. So if you'll please repeat after me. And uh, who on behalf of Sugar Creek Carriages is going to be responding or answering? I'll be responding with respect to the first one, uh, Mr. Chairman, mentions Ms. Zuniga, who is here, uh, and I will assist her in responding. Will they be um, directly responding or all be through you? Uh, direct. The, the first one is uh, is really a question of law, and I need to ask her some specific questions for the statute. Okay. Maybe do an independent contractor. All right. Well, uh, then I'll just uh, if they're going to make any direct statements, I'll put them under oath at that point. Yes. Uh, Ms. Robinson, if you'll please repeat after me, I swear or affirm. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give is the truth. That the testimony that I'm about to give is the truth. The whole truth the and whole nothing truth. but the truth. And nothing but the truth. All right. You may proceed. Um, I'm not sure which one I am supposed to present first. Is it the one against Cam Zuniga or the one about Clip Clop or the one about um, Sugar Creek Carriages? Well, the um, I've got. I know you've got three separate TLC complaints that you filed with the with the office. Let's take the first one involving Miss um, Cam Zuniga. Okay. It looks like there's two involving her. I wasn't quite sure what the difference was between well, those two. Well, one is against her and one is against Sugar Creek Carriages. Okay. Um, so, in the December 2018 meeting, Cam stated repeatedly, adamantly, and vehemently under oath that she does not work for Sugar Creek Carriages that she drives for herself and leases the carriages from Sugar Creek Carriages and operates as an independent contractor downtown. Cam Zuniga does not own a carriage company, nor is she the holder of a certificate of public convenience and necessity through Metro TLC. Um, and I don't have all the high tech stuff that hooks up to the TV, but if you don't mind, I would like to refresh your um, memories really quickly. I can't hear that at all. <laughs> Still not. Okay. Well, anyways, she, you were at, you weren't at the meeting. You, you all were at the meeting. You heard her say it and it's on public record, um, she stated adamantly and repeatedly that she does not work for Sugar Creek Carriages, that she operates downtown, um, as I just said. Um, now, now, I noticed that you listed 12.54.020B um, and 12.54.290 as the code sections that were violated. Could you reference the language that you believe has been violated? 12.54.020 uh, states that no horse-drawn carriage 
shall be used or operated on a for hire basis by any person in the territorial jurisdiction of the metropolitan government without an owner or operator having first obtained a certificate of public convenience and necessity. Cam Zuniga does not hold um, a certificate of public convenience and necessity. All right. And I believe you also referenced 12.54.050B uh, and 12.54.290. Um, 12.54.290 states that a certificate of public, <coughs> actually that probably would be more against Sugar Creek Carriages because it states that a, a certificate of public convenience and necessity, horse-drawn carriage permit, carriage driver's license or identification card is assigned to one person or company and is not transferable. Therefore, Sugar Creek Carriages cannot um, allow her to operate under his permit. All right, and then lastly, 12.54.050B. Um, I don't think I have that one actually. Is that Ms. Chair, what was the citation? It's 12.54.050B. Okay, I do have that one. It's a certificate <coughs> holder commits an offense if he or she fails to comply with the conditions or limitations placed on the operating authority under which he or she is operating the horse drawn carriages. Clearly, if she does not have a certificate, she's not operating within the limitations. All right, just for my own clarification, <clears throat> the complaint against Cam Zuniga cites 12.54.020, which is requiring a certificate of public convenience and necessity. And then the complaint against Sure Creek Carriages is a 12.54.20 for a permit is issued to only one entity and cannot be transferred. And then the .050B makes an offense to violate any of these statutes. Is that what you brought before us? Yes, sir. And that last one is against Sherwood Creek as well. Well, I have them all prepared as separate um, presentations, but I'm, I'm willing to go ahead and, and do the one against Sherwood Creek now as well if you would like yeah let's go ahead and take both of them at the same time there are two separate ones against sugar creek so um for the first one um again in the meeting on december 13th cam zuniga um, under oath openly and repeatedly adamantly vehemently stated in answer to my attorney head ed highland that she does not work for Sugar Creek Carriages. She is an independent contractor and she drives for herself and leases the carriage from Sugar Creek Carriages. Johnny Smith of Sugar Creek Carriages sat in observance and upon hearing her statement did not protest in any way or even attempt to deny that this was so. In fact, I just watched the video clip before I came in here. He shakes his head in agreement with her, um, which indicates that Sugar Creek Carriages knowingly allows an unpermitted company to operate in downtown Nashville under his certificate of public convenience and necessity as there is no Cam Zuniga Carriages or other company owned by Cam Zuniga currently holding a certificate of public convenience and necessity with the Metro Transportation Licensing Commission. I also submit to you that on November 21st, 2013, a company called Capital Carriages was dissolved as a permitted company under the ownership of Ron Jenkins for doing this exact same thing and illegally allowing first Mr. Thomas Taylor, who is now deceased, and afterwards his daughter Carol Hunt to operate in downtown Nashville under his certificate of public convenience and necessity. A precedence has been set. What was the date of that? November, 13, uh, November 21st, 2013. All right, um, and I, and just to clarify, let's let's take up your complaint uh, in reference to 
the holiday lights carriage tours after we conclude your okay. complaint about Miss Zuniga. Do you have anything else to present? Not at this time, but um, after they speak, <coughs> may I come back if I need to? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Ma'am, you don't know the definition of independent contractor legally, do you? No, sir, I do not. And you don't know the definition of employee as opposed to independent contractor? I take no, it. sir. Right. Uh, and <clears throat> you've not done any research, you have no statutory authority to submit to this commission? The research that I've just presented. Well, you're, you uh, made this complaint on the 9th of January of this year, correct? Yes, sir. Now, this was after you were advised that you had been accused of operating under another carriage while your permit itself was suspended out in Opryland Hotel area. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. You did this after you knew of those complaints against you. This is correct. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Zuniga if you'll come forward. And the chair uh, needs to swear you. Ms. Zuniga, repeat after me, please. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Zuniga, you did have this exchange with Mr. Highland, I believe. That part is correct, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and uh, do you have uh, any, uh, well, you state the obvious. You're not an attorney. No. I've shown you a copy of a statute, TCA 50-6-102. Other than what I've told you about that, you were not familiar with it before. No. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a copy of a portion that gives the factors, if I may submit that. All right. Ms. Zuniga, uh, the first thing that's considered here is the right to control the conduct of the work. Who tells you what to do in operating a carriage? Johnny and Brenda Smith. What's the type of control they exercise over your work? They schedule us, they um, tell me which carriage I'm driving, which horse I'm driving, and the time set um, forth what we're working um, pursuant to the rules and regulations and the city ordinances. Does Mr. Smith impose certain restrictions on you? For example, that you're not to be uh, smoking, you're not to be uh, uh, consuming alcohol and various other things having to do with the nature of your performance? Yes. All right. Uh, who has the right to hire or fire you? Johnny and Brenda Smith. All right. And you are paid from these rides, is that correct? Through the, the carriage people that take the rides, yes. All right. Uh, do you uh, do you have the freedom to select and hire any assistants, any helpers? No. Uh, do you furnish the tools or equipment? In this instance, that'd be the animals, the um, carriages, the uh, tackle, all the stuff that you use. No. Uh, do you self-schedule your working hours? No. Do you have the freedom for Mr. Smith to offer services to any other entities? No. You uh, have your uh, your card that's issued by the commission? Yes. Is that issued through your employment with Sugar Creek? Yes, it says Sugar Creek carriages on it through the city. All right. Now, had you considered any of the legal definitions of independent contractor or employer-employee at the time you made those statements? No. Let's be truthful. You're aggravated with Mr. Highland. You argued with him, weren't you? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, there aren't any facts that are alleged other than what she has said. That has been explained. And I would uh, uh, submit that the statute that we have just cited, and I went through each of these factors, is the product of decades of, of uh, consideration of these subjects by the appellate courts. Uh, this began, as, uh, as you know, with circumstances of who was responsible for a tort committed by a person was that person an independent contractor or an employee. So responding at Superior may have been the beginning of that. There were decades of litigation over employer-employee from the standpoint of workers' compensation. 
So finally, the General Assembly adopted and then subsequently amended uh, the statute uh, 50-6-101, and this is the product, if you go back and review those cases, this is the product of all of those years of appellate decisions. It codifies them. That's what this is. She is plainly not an independent contractor. She is plainly, in terms of driving these carriages, operating these <coughs> carriages in downtown Nashville and wherever she does it, doing so as an employee of Sugar Creek Carriages. Mr. Blackburn, I, I know this arises from a statement that Mrs. Zuniga said at our December meeting. I'm just trying to remember, what was the complaint involving uh, in which Mr. Highland was representing the other side. Um, why was it relevant for Ms. Zuniga to say that she, vehemently and repeatedly that she was that she leased her carriage from Sugar Creek and and actually does no work for Sugar Creek carriages? If I remember correctly, and Ms. Zuniga, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the context was a complaint against. Uh, American Melody for having animals that were not shot. I don't believe that her statements, which were a bit impulsive, if you'll excuse me for saying that, uh, had any were material to the issue being discussed. That's my recollection. It, is that your recollection? Yes. And if it's not, tell me. I'm just trying yeah, to. Remember. It was the complaint regarding um, American Melody and Melody not shoeing her horses pursuant to the ordinance. As you know, Mr. Chairman, sometimes these hearings become a little distracted, <laughs> and I think that's where we were on this, on that matter. Uh, but whether she, uh, her statements could not have made her an independent contractor or an employee, either one. It's only the relationship she has with the employer. Uh, Mr. Smith will confirm these factors uh, if the commission needs that confirmed, but I don't really believe there's any dispute about it. So I would move to dismiss these complaints. I have a qu couple questions of Ms. Zuniga, if you don't mind. Certainly. You made a comment. You were asked a question about <clears throat> you are paid for your work, and you said through the carriage people who take the rides. Tell me, tell me exactly who pays you and who signs your paycheck. The Smiths do. We and turn their money in, and then they, they dial it out to us. All right. So you're testifying here today that you receive money from people who take the rides, you hold that money, you mm -hmm. turn it over to the Smiths. Yes. And then what? And then they tell, give us our, our pay. In cash or by a, a check from it, the company? It just depends on what type of, if it's a downtown or a private event, it just all depends. Well, typically downtown. Typically downtown, it could be by cash or um, credit card payment through PayPal. All right. Uh, may I say so you do not receive a check from the Smiths for your work downtown? Occasionally, yes, I will. All right. And now, do you have insurance for the times that you're working? Insurance? Yes. Your yeah. own insurance? My own insurance? Well, and... Who provides the insurance when you're operating the, the, the Sugar carriage? Creek Carriages. And do you carry any insurance? Sugar Creek Carriages carries it for me. Okay. And when you say for me, whose name is it in? It's under the business Sugar Creek Carriages. Who pays the workers' comp? That would be, have to be a question for <coughs> the Smiths because I don't know how they do their finances. Have you ever paid any money to Sugar Creek for use of the carriage? No. Under oath, you're saying you've never, never paid, them paid money a for dime to them. No. Uh, Mr. Question. Commissioner, one of the things that she was trying to explain, they do take uh, book rides through uh, Groupon and services like that. Mm -hmm. So in those instances, there'd be no cash transaction, and that's where they would get one of the places where they would get provide a check. And I'm not sure at any one time whether they have five or more employees at any one time. Perhaps they do, but... Uh, what do you receive at, in January each year to file... What do you receive in January of each year to file with your taxes? 
um, just my paperwork, my copy of my paperwork and everything uh, that I've turned in. Do you get a 1099 in. or a W-2? Um, 1099. You get a 1099? I, I 1099. Do you know what a 1099 is? Mm -hmm. What is it's, it? That's the way they give it to me. And that's usually yeah. given to an independent contractor, right? No. I've been that way for years. I understand. So you're saying today under oath you've been, you receive a 1099 from Sugar Creek and you've been receiving it for years? at this point. It, well, I didn't say right now. You just Over the years, me. you just said for years you've been receiving a 1099. Now, which is it today? For to, I don't know what they're going to give me for last year yet, how they're d doing it. I haven't received it. Sounds rather evasive to me because you would really know, I think, by this point, uh, February of this year, because they were <coughs> supposed to be issued by December, by January 31st. But in the past years, you've received a 1099 from Sugar Creek. Not from Sugar Creek, no. From who? I've worked in other markets. Okay. And I've received. You have never price. received a W-2 from Sugar Creek. Not a W-2. Thank you. Oh, when you file your taxes, what do you list yourself as? I will list myself as Camel Warren. Okay. Do you My list Do you list yourself as an employee of Sugar Creek? Excuse me, just to answer okay. the question. Okay. He's had the, uh, Mr. When you file your income your taxes, how do you list yourself? How do I list myself? Yes. With the 1099 that you attach to your forms, how do you list yourself? I, I listed as Camel Warren. Thank you. Mr. McNally, I understand and appreciate the questions that you're asking, and I've had this discussion recently with Mr. Smith and have advised him that he needs to sit down with an accountant and make sure that he is properly handling these things from a tax standpoint. I understand your questions. However, none of the criteria of independent contractor are met, and a technical failure or legal failure in the means of reporting it to the IRS does not change that. We submit. Mr. Fields, do we have the minutes from the December meeting? We do not. They're online. I can produce. I'm asking a question. Ms. Zuniga, how, um, how many companies do you work for? In Nashville? Mm -hmm. Just Sugar Creek Carriages. Just sugar. How many hours a week do you work? Uh, shoot, last week I think I worked maybe <coughs> 12 hours. Is it, so it's not the same every week? No. Okay. And you don't work for anyone else at the same time? No. Ms. Zuniga, so you do not lease a carriage no, from I Sugar Creek? No, I do Creek? not. When you're paid from Sugar Creek, do they pay part of your taxes? My taxes? Right. Pay, I just pay my ta my portion of my taxes. But they I, also send in money. They send in their taxes. They I don't I don't deal with their tax issues. That's their personal. No, no, but I mean, if you're an employee of them, they should be taking out taxes to send they in. Pay, yeah, they pay, they pay their taxes. But Are there withholdings thank you, on your paycheck? On my paycheck stuff? Yes. Um, I just, I pay my, my taxes. I send it all into the my account. So they don't withhold anything from what they pay you for your taxes. I don't know. I just send in all my information to my accountant and let my accountant deal with it and sign it and send it off. Well, on your taxes, do they assess a self-employment tax? No, I, I've never seen that on my taxes. For so who's paying your uh, Social Security? My Social Security. It's right. Who's taking that out of your check or out of your cash that you're receiving? I believe they do. They send it in. I don't know how it's done because I don't do you, deal with any. I'm not familiar with tax law or anything like that. So I let my accountant, who's trained in everything, to do that. I'd like to see your taxes, uh, at least to, to see how they're filed before rendering decisions. Well, that was my question. Did anyone bring any documents to? support either well, she she didn't have any accusation against her having to do with how taxes. she was paid or her taxes these are for areas that in my work I have to be familiar with I have some of the same criticisms that are being addressed today but, uh, but and you're, I have you're preparing her defense today and surely you would have anticipated that 
the tax forms might have supported the fact that she's receiving a W-2 as an employee of Sugar Creek to, de to defend here. And we could have looked at that and said, oh, wow, okay, yeah, that's clear. Except that I'm satisfied and was before I arrived here that there is no W-2. So there's no reason <coughs> for me to come know. here and pretend <laughs> that, there, yeah. that there were. So we can infer that the taxes would not support her position that she's an employee of Sugar Creek. The taxes would not, the, the manner in which these taxes are paid would not support either position. Uh, the fact is, is that there are statutory definitions of independent contractor. And the question is whether she has acted uh, in such a way as to violate the rules of this commission, not some rules of the Internal Revenue Service or some statutory guidelines having to do with taxes and Social Security. I think these things need to be addressed. Um, there are a lot of issues. Uh, if she works 12 hours, she is part-time. There are, uh, if you talk about uh, FLSA claims, you're only talking about situations where you have 40 hours and, and more. There's a whole lot of issues that I have advised Mr. Smith needs to be addressed. I suspect that all these carriage companies have been operated time out of mind by the same casual methods, and I've urged him to <coughs> correct that, but that does not in any way convert her under a statutory definition into an employee versus an independent contractor. It doesn't satisfy that dichotomy. What do, if, Now, if she were, I would say the converse, Mr. McNally, if she had these documents that clearly showed that she was being paid as an employee with the withholding, then obviously I would have brought those and tendered them. They don't exist. So the question becomes, in the manner in which she is employed, if she, if there were negligence charged to her, would it be imputed to Mr. Smith or to Sugar Creek Carriages? Under these guidelines, it certainly would. And how the taxes were prepared and paid, whether it was appropriate or not, would not enter into that decision. And so I think it's the same legal question. Well, we are faced with the fact that it, there hadn't been any denial that your client made these statements that she was an independent contractor, leased the, the uh, carriages from Sugar Creek uh, under, while under oath. So we are faced with that in front of us here today. We are. Let me ask her one question in that regard. I asked you about that very thing. You yes. call that? And you told me that uh, in other locations, in other cities, you felt you, that you had been treated as an independent contractor in those environments, those yeah. jobs? Yes. What would another city be that you would? I've worked in San Antonio. I've worked out in California. All right. So when you were describing these things to the commission, had you, were you thinking about how that was treated, how you were treated in these other locations, at least your assumption of it? Yes. All right. Um, what she said was not material to the questions. And it was wrong. I don't know how else to put it. It was incorrect. And her testimony today isn't contradicted and cannot be contradicted because it's absolutely true. And all that uh, uh, Ms. Robinson is accusing her of is saying something that was wrong and immaterial and shouldn't have been stated, for which she should apologize to this commission. But that doesn't turn her into an independent contractor when no other criterion is met. Right. I, I I understand that, and I guess I had the same concern that Ms. McNally does, and I'm sure the other commissioners do, that Ms. Zuniga made these statements under oath. They clearly must have been convenient and helpful for the position that she was taking during that complaint. I have looked at the minutes. Unfortunately, they're not specific enough to remind me what the complaint was about. but. The, the issue, and I'll ask you some questions in a minute, Ms. Robinson, but the issue that we have here is Ms. Zuniga stated, made a statement under oath, and it just flat out is not true. Um, she doesn't lease a carriage. She does work for Sugar Creek, um, and that is directly opposite of what she said in December. Um, That, that is a, that's not the complaint that Ms. Robinson brought, but that is a, that's troublesome. Well, it may I actually, it may actually be what has, well, it is what's developed during the course of this hearing. Ms. Robinson saw 
one thing that she brought a complaint about, and as we investigated here today, we're developing another concern, which is the giving a false statement to this group under, while under oath. Well, I understand your concern. I appreciate that, but she's not charged with that today. And my motion. No, no, but it's definitely become, <coughs> it's definitely arose from the investigation, the questions here today. And it's not like, like whether you're an independent contractor or an employee. It's either you did lease them or you didn't lease them. You either were in, you know, I mean, it's not subject to interpretation. It was very clear. Well, I, I've represented Sugar Creek for a number of years, and to my knowledge, they have never leased equipment to anyone, ever. And I think we will give that testimony today if you ask Mr. Smith. Now, we're, we're talking about people who uh, Mr. Smith does a very good job. He has a tremendous safety record. Uh, he has uh, very good records with the health and welfare of his animals and the condition of his equipment. In terms of these issues, he is not, he, he would not be characterized as sophisticated. Let, let's pause on Mr. Smith a second. The other concern I've got is Ms. Zuniga has brought many complaints before this commission over the last year. And she's been instrumental in showing us videos and interpreting the videos and trying to show, guide us through things. And now suddenly I'm finding out that uh, statements that were made in December were untrue. Well, so well, I would remind you I'm that just, it's an observation I'm making. I don't need a yeah. comment or analysis of it. Well, I would remind the commission that in each of those occasions, uh, the oral testimony was not seen to be determinative. There were a number of those that were dismissed because it was not shown on the video. Uh, I've always believed that one witness worthy of belief <coughs> is all it takes to, to prove something. And now you're questioning whether she was worthy of belief, which I understand, but those rulings were based upon the video evidence. For example, <coughs> the showing of the horse's hoof that were fractured along the, uh, along the edges, which demonstrated the damage to the horse because they weren't shod. Those things had nothing to do with her credibility. But I understand that. I understand that. These were in a, unfortunate comments that she made, which is why we're here today, <laughs> why I'm here today. But the specific allegation is that she was an independent contractor because she said so. One cannot just make oneself an independent contractor by saying so. But did she specifically say she leased? And my memory could be wrong, but that's the memory I have, is that I'm not an employee, I lease a contract, or I lease carriages from them. How does that just come out? I mean, I feel like lease is a fairly common term, and when you say you lease something, you're paying somebody to use their equipment. I don't think that's overly complicated. So why would she say that? It's a that fair question. Yes, I wish you would. <laughs> okay. Because in my definition of lease, in the, from being in this industry for so long, it is a for hire contract, an employee contract. And it does state that in the dictionary. It is a for hire contract. I am hired as an employee by Sugar Creek Carriages. And that's how I took it. If it was a wrong verbiage, I do apologize. Well, we're willing to stipulate that it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I do have a couple of follow-up questions to Ms. Robbins. Ms. Robertson, uh, could you remind the commission what the December complaint against you or your company was about? Yes, sir. Um, it was about my horses being unshod um, because uh, Mr. McNally um, worded and the commission unanimously approved that there could be a horse worked barefoot. Um, however, I was not aware that Mr. Fields had not turned that into the council. Um, so I was brought before the board and, and what's your memory as to why um, Mr. Ms. Highland Zuniga was, made the statement that she leases her carriage and she does not work for Sugar Creek Carriages? Mr. Highland was trying to establish um, the fact that I think there were several complaints against me about the, the barefoot horses at that meeting. And Mr. Highland was trying to establish the fact that they all came from Sugar Creek Carriages. His question was, does anyone here... Um, 
that has turned in a complaint against American Melody Carriages not work for Sugar Creek Carriages, which is when Ms. Suniga spoke up. Thank you. Does anyone I, else have any questions? No, but there's a gentleman in the back right there. Mr. Robinson, who's the guy in the green shirt behind you there? He works um, downtown with several of the companies, but I actually have... Do you know why he's pointing up here? I believe that he m might want to speak. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but if I could, please, I have a couple of other um, comments and um, a question for a couple of questions for uh, Cam, if I may. You, you can uh, present your additional comments, yes, and questions. Um, Charlotte Clawson is an employee who works for Southern Comfort Carriages. She wasn't able to be here today um, because she has kids and she had to pick them up from school, but she did uh, submit a statement to me that she started working for Sugar Creek Carriages in May of 2015. She went through all the TLC requirements and received her permit. After obtaining the per permit and within the first week of work, she was told that she had to go get a small business license. She was told by Johnny Smith how to get the license he requires every driver to have. She followed his instructions, went to the city hall and tried to get the license. And when the lady started asking questions, she found out that she would be planning on working downtown. Nashville and the lady told her that she needed to go to that city to get the license she said she left and called mr. Smith he then instructed her to go to the courthouse and omit or lie and say that her business will be ran at her own address um, as he instructed me it had to be in the same county I lived in so I could use my address as the business address she did so and as she worked for him, he pressed the issue to all the drivers that we are general contractors and rent or lease the horse equipment and permit that he holds with the TLC. She never once questioned this as he had also pushed filing the taxes under their own business name. Um, he was paid for the lease at the end of every night with a 50-50 split of ride income. It was not until she worked with other companies that she realized they did not require a small business license. And she closes with, if you have any questions, um, her information is current and on file with the TLC. You're welcome to contact her. What's her last name? Her name is Charlotte Clawson. <clears throat> Chairman, I would move to strike that as obvious hearsay with an unavailable witness. And Mr. Uh, Smith will emphatically deny it. Uh, overruled. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what, uh, what office was she going to to get a small business license? Was that here in Davidson County? I believe at that time she lived in Hickman County. All right, and you said you had some questions for Ms. Zuniga? Yes. Uh, Cam, do you have a business permit Ms. to operate Zuniga, a carriage? Zuniga, if you could come back to the podium, please. Do you have a business license to operate a carriage anywhere? No, I do not. Okay. I just want you to remember that you're under oath I, right now and that not. it's public record. That's you fine. Were, and you made your comments. And then I have a question for her, too. So, no, I do not have a business license for okay. a carriage company. Okay. Um, so... Mr. Blackburn, are you trying to um, say that it's okay to lie under oath if someone is under duress? No, Ms. Ms. Robinson, you don't get to ask questions of the lawyers. Okay. I have a question for you. Is that okay? Yes. Um, how do you pay your employees and how do you file your taxes? I file my taxes as American Melody Carriages under my own name and my own business name. And, and I pay my employees at the end of each night. Okay. Do you 1099 them or are they W-2'd? I don't pay them over six hundred dollars, so they don't require either. They so, file their own taxes. So she paid, then they're te it's considered a ten ninety nine employee. They have to ten ninety nine you. 
so they are considered then. Did you suddenly so. become a tax expert? So, no, I'm just asking a question. Okay. I'm following what they've asked me. So, and I don't make $600 a night either. So, I didn't say a night. Ms. Robinson, do you have any further questions? No, sir. Or, or anything else to present? I don't believe so. All right. Yeah. Do you Why have not? a business license for Ms. Yes, Zunica? For, no, not for Ms. Zunica, no. So that's what uh, I'm asking. No, you I, asked her that question. I want to know, do you have something? I am actually working another job right now, so I did not have time to go and research that. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this has got to be the fourth time that she has said that she was told by this commission she did not have to have shod horses. That's just false. That's just completely <coughs> incorrect. In fact, she was told that the uh, requirement was uh, imposed upon her that she had to obey it immediately and she failed to do that. She was, um, uh, the, the issue if Is you relevant to this issue? If the issue, if you recall, was about uh, having the rubber sole shoes and what the commission determined was was that the horses had to be shod but that it would be left to the discretion of the uh, particular company as to the method and the nature of how that was done and what she was being what was being discussed last month or would have been with the charges was that uh, she not only had she continued to operate without the shoes without being shot in any way and it was obvious proof of that but in addition to that she was operating with another company without that company's uh, authority she was uh, working on uh, with uh, Southern Comfort at Opryland and uh, what we anticipated was that there would be a debate by her or a question raised by her as to whether uh, that was public property and therefore did the Commission have any jurisdiction that's the part that she is uh, that she is omitted. Thank you. All right, having heard from Ms. Robinson and as well as Ms. Zuniga and uh, Mr. Blackburn, her counsel, um, we as a commission need to, to decide whether Ms. Robinson has a has a proper complaint. In essence, Mr. Blackburn has. Uh, <coughs> Ask that we dismiss as a matter of law the complaints brought against Sugar Creek and Miss Zuniga. In the uh, unfolding of the presentation of the case as well as the response by Miss Zuniga, it's apparent that um, Miss Zuniga has admitted making a false statement under oath to the Commission in the December 2018 meeting of the Commission. Um, and uh, I'd like to find out if we can take that up as a matter um, and as a, a, as a commission and uh, rule on that issue separate and apart from the complaint. There is no specific rule um or law on the books as far as lying under oath to the commission. Um, <coughs> in the new edit, I believe we're doing a conduct unbecoming, sort of a catch-all provision, which I think that this would probably or perhaps fit into. Um, but per se, there is no rule here that says you cannot lie to the commission. Is this something that gets referred out to the, um, the district attorney? That I don't know. And when, when she was here previously, was she sworn in? Even though there isn't a, a rule, was she sworn in? She was most likely sworn in. We would have to go back and look at the... We would have to check the video and or the... Well, your phone locked up. I don't have the minutes pulled up. As it stands right now, the only uh, disciplinary action that we have with making a false statement is when you make it on your application. So just so that I'm clear, even if she was sworn in, which we I understand we, we don't have the video for that right now, 
there it really is nothing that we can do if she violates that with the when she was sworn in. Yeah, I'm not the attorney yeah. here, but it, but it strikes me that in the ordinance itself, there is, the only reference to truthfulness is related to the app, the company's application. Which, which means there's obviously a hole here, mm -hmm. right? And that's generally how we come to find out that there are gaps in the rules because we hit situations like this. Uh, what we can look at is um, even with respect to discipline, it always says fails to fails to comply with this chapter it always goes back to the chapter um, and that's why I'm hesitant to say that we have or the Commission has independent authority while I understand that it's egregious and I believe it should be in here um, as written I don't I don't see how we get there Billy. So a misrepresentation during an evidentiary hearing in front of the commission can go on. Um, there's no consequences. Yeah. yeah. Clearly under this chapter. Yeah. Uh, whether there are other parts of the Metropolitan Code of Law and or state law, we'd have to. Right. Have to refer that back to legal for review. And if but you want, if you can, what you can do is um, defer the matter. Let us do a more legal, comprehensive search of what we have here, and you know, re-agenda it for next month when we have a, a full grasp of of what violations, if any, we have before us. Because as I sit here today, I have only the Metro Code in front of me. Only the specifically only the provision relating to horse-drawn carriages. I like that idea to give. Um our legal representative time to to look at to see if there's something that might be applicable to a material misrepresentation in front of the commission during an evidentiary hearing. I think we can deal with the other matters regarding Sugar Creek and Johnny Smith. Yeah, I think that's a a good suggestion. Um, You know, I'm I, I'm hesitant to um, well. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, it's unfortunate that we're presented with this circumstance, but I do think it's very important that when people make testimony before the commission that and they're put under oath that there's a presumption of what they're telling us is the truth and, and nothing but the truth and um, clearly that that has not happened here and um, there should there should be some way that we can address this um, and it's it's a serious it's a in, a, in the abstract it's a very serious when we when we get false statements presented before the commission, um, the actual substance of the statement may not have mattered of much substance in the long run, but it was in fact false. I would also observe that this situation regarding the statement, the false statement made in the December meeting, became apparent during this hearing today. Um, neither Mr. Black. Uh, Ms. Robinson did a very fine job of filling out her complaints and citing to specific code sections that dealt with the complaint that she believed she could carry today. And Mr. Blackburn prepared the response for it. And we had an opportunity for both parties that were that were literally prepared to address the issue and, and give us some guide or some light on it. None of us were prepared for a um, perjured testimony from the commission.
Does anyone want to make a motion regarding deferring the matter a month? Before we, before we make a motion to ask a question, or do you think it's better to defer the all the complaints for another month, or? No, I was talking about the issue with Ms. Zuniga. We can certainly take up the complaints separately. I was going to ask, um, is it appropriate to have Ms. Robinson in the meantime submit that whatever it was she was trying to play for us? So we have we access could. to that. Okay. It's online. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll review it in full. And okay. We're good. And could we have it available to be shown on the big wide screen for the next meeting? Absolutely. Really. Channel, Metro Channel 3 hey, provides us excellent service. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want it, I can get it on my computer and bring it up right now to the wide screen. Not really. Yeah, I think I think we're going to defer if we get a motion. Well, I'll make the motion to defer this matter until the next hearing. Can you be a little more specific? Since we, I believe we're going to try to take up Ms. Robinson's complaints and deal with those right now. I will make a motion to defer a Mel American Melody Carriages complaint against Kim Zuniga and Sugar Creek. So Kim Zuniga, um, regarding the certificate, what is it, 12 point, 540 b and 290. I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to get a second on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that I believe yeah, the, I, I, I believe we've Chair. already um, we have yes. be, because of the plethora of complaints we have we we in, in previous years we've never had to actually develop a numbering system for complaints I think the question comes if this is TLC 19-012 you'll notice that at the top of the complaint mm -hmm. uh, or if this is uh, TLC 19-013 I think the one that you're actually wanting to move forward that you'd like to defer is probably 013 that states Cam's and Eagle openly and vehemently. And it's so, yeah. since, it's, since the 013 is an official record of the commission by, by from your staff, you could probably pull. I think that's the one you're talking about. Well, I, I see. What, what I was referring to, um, and I believe. We had a consensus of the commissioners, which was to defer the, the legal issue of Ms. Zuniga's uh, perjury, yeah. oh, um, and then but to go forward with Ms. Robinson's complaints, so we can make a resolution I, I about those. So, two separate deal with the, the complaints there. Deal with the complaints. However, the issue that's risen out of it. Legal would do research, assuming there's a motion made, and then we would present that back to you. Well, here, here's another thought: is that uh, legal could investigate the matter about making a false statement in front of the commission during the evidentiary hearing, and if we find that there's a stat or a section of the code that would be applicable as a violation, then Mr. Fields, I guess, could bring the complaint. Sure. If, if, if. And if there isn't, then there would be no complaint to bring forward. Does that make sense? Which we I guess wouldn't take it. We would not take action of the commission other than advise us to investigate. Yeah. And if we fi have a finding, then make the file the complaint. And that way, well, then we can deal with TLC 19, 012, and 013 today. Yeah. I understand. Okay, that wasn't my understanding. I apologize. Um, if we're going to do that, then I, I would would like to see that video. <laughs> I, I would like to see it. Uh, apparently, I'm the only one who hasn't seen it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that you haven't seen the video. You just I don't think you were a commissioner when the meeting yeah, took right. place. Mm -hmm. and before I haven't seen it. Sorry. Our YouTube channel is very well watched. We have our own YouTube channel. And it's, we have an excellent, I, I we have excellent vision. Wasn't familiar until recently. Uh huh. 
Wait, I'll or just met, if it's uh, Metro Nashville YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's the whole channel for Metro government. You're a celebrity. <laughs> We're certainly one of the more popular commission <laughs> meetings here lately. You've never had anybody come up to you and say, oh. Would you, Ms. Let me make, Commissioner, do you want to, would you like to see that video today or prior to the next meeting? Well, I mean, it sounds like we're trying to rule on the complaint. Well, so Ms. I Robinson does have the video on her iPhone. She can like show it. Sure. Okay. Thank you for indulging me. Of course. <laughs> Would you pass my phone? <laughs> you feel, I may, I may feel like you out. forgot your belt? I, I, I could just run out. I won't take all my stuff. So I'll come back in. <laughs> Getting back uh, to the matter at hand, um, just in case it's not clear, uh, we're being advised by our legal counsel and, and Mr. Fields that we actually do not have to take a, a motion in order to uh, uh, defer the issue regarding um, Ms. Zuniga and the statement she made before the commission. Um, but we'll just allow Mr. Fields to investigate after consulting with our counsel, and uh, if a complaint needs to be brought, it'll be brought in the name of the commission. Um, so now we can address head-on the actual complaints uh, numbers, TLC 19-012 and 013. Can, can those be read again? Yes. Yeah. Tell me what. Tell me the number, and I'll read it for you. Um, I guess start with O two. Twelve. Zero uh, one two. I'm sorry. Zero one two. Twelve fifty four. Zero one two. You mean two o? Twelve fifty four o two o. No. 
she's referring to the number that oh the yeah, office oh you want to you want to read the complaint or the uh, I, yeah it's just on my computer and oh. he he's given it to me um on my computer it's hard to see yeah i can't read it at all my copies were completely illegible so okay. <laughs> that would be helpful it states um i'm looking at 012 at the tlc meeting 12 13 18 Cam Zuniga in front of the TLC board director and Sugar Creek Carriages certificate holder openly, vehemently, repeatedly stated while under oath that she leases a carriage from Sugar Creek, Johnny Smith, with a no denial from him and drives for herself, does not work for Sugar Creek Carriages. And the, the actual sections that are alleged to be violated is first that Sugar Creek should is not permitted to extend their permit or give their in permit to another entity and then 12.54.050B says it's an offense to violate 12.54.290. So this is the complaint against Sugar Creek, and the other one is the same circumstances, but against Mrs. Amiga. And it's alleging a violation of 12.54.020, which is the um, ordinance applicable to the actual drivers. Need to have a permit. Yes. I guess I'm, I'm still concerned about the fact that it, it seems like they are operating in a ma manner where they truly are independent contractors, they're just calling them employees for tax purposes. Is, is, am I the only one that is, you know, I do think the perjure or, you know, the inaccurate or perjure statement is, is a big issue, and I think that I'm happy that we're going to be addressing that later. But I also think that in regards to this ma manner, that as far as I can tell directly corresponds to the complaint that it, there's a discrepancy here that I'm still having difficulty with. I think it might be easier if we first just take the one against Sugar Creek Carriages. Okay. The, uh, the uh, TLC 19012. The allegation is that Ms. Zuniga made a statement under oath that she was an independent contractor and she leased the carriages from Sugar Creek. And the code sections are that Sugar Creek is not allowed to extend or pass their permit to another entity and that it's a violation to do that. I don't think there's any proof that Sugar Creek committed these acts here today in front of us. Um, I, I agree that I think they're running loose in terms, of, and Mr. Blackburn's even suggested that he's had some conversations with Mr. Smith, the owner of Sugar Creek, about tightening up and looking a little more carefully about the way he is compensating the people who are driving the carriages. And I'm not, I'm very carefully not using the words employees or independent contractors there. Just, I think, I, I completely agree. I think they're loose in the manner that they're dealing with compensation to the people who are out there driving their carriages. But I haven't seen any proof today at all that Sugar Creek leased the carriage to Miss Zuga or that they extended their permit to Miss Zuga at this time. Um, what's being said to me, and, I, and I, it is true, we, we didn't ask them. She, is that something that we can ask just so that it can be under oath? And we're assuming accurate and truthful. Ask what? Can we ask Sugar Creek, the owner of Sugar Creek, if he leases his? We asked Ms. Sudiga, but we didn't mm -hmm. ask him. I don't have an objection to that. However, the question raised by the commissioner is a lack of proof. The burden of proof is not on him to prove a negative. But he will, he will happily say that no, he doesn't lease his uh, carriages and whatever the challenges are and how they're paid, which by the way, her testimony pretty well indicated what I thought, which was this is how they've all been doing it time out of mind, whether it's correct or not. But Mr. Smith, the response, if that's, 
Yeah, I'll put you under oath. Mr. Smith, please repeat after me. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give. I swear or affirm the testimony I'm about to give. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Is the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Quickly, if I can help you out. Mr. Smith, who owns the carriages that Ms. Zuniga has operated in downtown Nashville? Me and my wife, Brenda. All right. Have you ever leased those to her? No, sir. Who owns the animals and the equipment that's used uh, to uh, operate the carriages with the animals? Me and my wife, Brenda. Have you ever leased the animals or any of that equipment to Ms. Zuniga? No, sir. Uh, do you determine when she can show up for work? Yes, sir. And how long she's supposed to be there? Yes, sir. And the rules under which she has to conduct herself while she's there? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, does she have the freedom to uh, contract out her work to somebody else without your permission? No, sir. I believe that covers it. I have a question. You ever suggested to a, a driver that they could operate under your permit? No, sir. You ever suggested, implied, or explicitly to a driver that uh, you could extend your permit to them? No, sir. All right, and do you carry workers' compensation? No, sir, I don't, but I'm, I'm going to think, think about doing that now. Do you carry, um, do you carry liability insurance? Yes, sir, a million dollar liability. Okay, and does that cover your drivers? Yes, sir. How do you know? Because my, I have to, it's regulated by Mr. Fields and the transportation that our, our, our carriages cover the drivers. It, it, and, and, I, and I've talked to my agent. It, co who, it covers whoever is driving that carriage, and all my carriages are covered. Do you issue W 2s to your drivers? I haven't, sir. And I haven't. What uh, do you issue? I don't issue, haven't issued nothing. They, they don't work a 40 hour week. Do they work for you? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it correct, Mr. Smith, that I've advised you you need to consult with uh, CPAs or tax <coughs> attorneys or someone who has qualifications I don't possess on that issue? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. <coughs> sir, were you present at the meeting that was shown on the clip? The, yes, I was. Um, she was pretty adamant that on that tape, from what I heard, that she was leasing the carriages from you. Did, but you didn't, you didn't take issue with that, right? How come? Well, I did take an issue with it, but I, it was not my. She she was acting on her. It wasn't Sugar Creek Carriages. She was filed that complaint on her behalf, and I was not. It wasn't my turn to talk. But I did have issue with it, Mr. Smith. Have I cautioned you in the years I've represented you not to blurt out and do the things that other fellows do just to wait until it's your turn yes sir and i even had a discussion a little bit about mr fields about that we read him something she didn't have the floor at the time and i advised him he can't just stand up and say that's not true i guess he can but he should um that's all right miss robinson I'm satisfied. I make a motion that the complaint against Sugar Creek brought by Melody Robinson be dismissed under the specific uh, ordinances that are cited in the complaint. in favor aye motion passes that leaves us with uh, zero abstain. one three. Oh, you did abstain yes i miss i misheard i apologize okay. we do have one yeah, abstain i didn't speak well, i'm, I'm sorry abstain. i um I'm, I'm still really on the fence with this one um i'm also going to abstain does that mean i need to vote yeah, yeah. Well, what's the quorum rule? The quorum rule is four, so the vote will be two, zero, and two. Okay. And the 
So he would need to vote, you know. Um, right. I'm an A. I vote in favor of the motion. That leaves zero one three. Just so I'm really clear about zero one three, the complaint is that Cam Zuniga was operating a carriage without a certificate for public convenience and necessity. Correct. Okay. You will have to make And I feel like the proof that we've heard today is that um, she didn't need one because she works for Sugar Creek. Can I play devil's advocate with that for a moment? Absolutely. Clearly, her sworn testimony in December is that she believes she was an independent contractor leasing the carriages from Sugar Creek. And after the complaint is filed, she's, with probably the advice of counsel, um, has determined that she's now a, uh, an employee of Sugar Creek. And yet there's no proof that she's an employee from Sugar Creek because the things you normally look for for an employee would don't, don't seem don't to be exist. present. Yeah. Well, the, well, we do have some proof. We have the testimony of Mrs. Zuniga today, and then we also have the testimony of Mr. Smith um, and Mr. through Mr. Blackburn's questions uh, of that are all uh, you know going through the the factors that courts in the, in Tennessee have applied to determine factually if a if, if an agent is an employee or an independent contractor. So. But you're right, we don't have any paper proof, and certainly the, the way Mr. Smith is, is handling it from an accounting perspective, it, it would not support yeah, there's a that, that she's an employee. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. The bottom line is there's a discrepancy in what they're saying versus the, the documentation. I, I mean, it, that just kind of is it is what it is. You know, the, the concept I think we're running into is, is called estoppel. Um, and so in, in the December meeting, um, Ms. Zuniga's position was she was an independent contractor. Um, and rightly so, Ms. Robinson decided to bring a complaint saying, okay, well, you don't have a permit for a carriage company to be operating. Um, you're in violation of 1254. 020 and now she is testifying today that she um, doesn't lease the carriages that she actually works for Sugar Creek and is therefore not in violation of 1254020 um, you know I think practically though as I think the proof is shown today that she um, is in fact treated as an employee whether she's I think it's not as relevant that for tax purposes she may not be by Sugar Creek carriages but practically speaking based on the testimony I've heard today she is treated as an employee of Sugar Creek um, that's what has caused us to have a major problem with the testimony that she's given in December and while we've asked um, our legal counsel to look at that issue for us. Mr. Chair, do you mind to read the qualifications that he gave you of what states? Well, I, I don't. I don't. I that's fine. I don't. I don't want to presume necessarily that this is in fact the law, but gotcha. certainly, Mr. Mr. Blackburn has provided uh, a section of the Tennessee Code annotated for us to review.
if I'm already doing legal research on the other piece, if you all would feel more comfortable doing re for me to do research on the difference between an employee and an independent contractor <coughs> to confirm, which I'm sure Mr. Blackburn is, is correct, but if you'd feel more comfortable for me to do that, then I'm more than happy to do that as well. Which means that we would then defer, defer the whole matter for the whole thing. I would, together. yes. Yeah. I think that's the best thing to do. <coughs> well, I make a motion to defer the complaint brought by Melody Robinson against uh, Cam Zuniga, 12C or TLC 19-013 to the next meeting for legal counsel to give us an opinion about an independent contractor versus employee. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, Ms. Robinson, now we have your complaint against um, Sugar Creek Carriages in connection with uh, Clip Clop Rides Holiday Lights Carriage Tours. I would like to say that uh, according to Metro Legal, I'm only required to um, present a scintilla of evidence just to remind um, everyone so there is a um, company that operates giving carriage rides for Hillsborough West and Nashville each Christmas it is um, referred to as clip clop rides or holiday lights carriage tours it has its own um, logo and signage uh, the equipment empl and employees of Sugar Creek Carriages are used for this operation. However, there is also no company called Clip Clop Rides or Holiday Lights Carriage Tours currently holding a certificate of public convenience and necessity through the Metro Transportation Licensing Commission. Um, you will see that they have their own logo. Nowhere on the HWEN website or in any of their advertising media is any mention of Sugar Creek Carriages. Also. Sugar Creek Carriage's social media post regarding this event does not state that they do the rides as a company. They simply state that they, quote, support the event. In all of their other posts, such as when they operate downtown or other <coughs> special events, they state that they will be doing rides or here we are doing rides at such and such. Therefore, by all appearances, I submit to you that they are allowing an unpermitted company to operate in Davidson County under their permit. Again, 12.54.070 states, um, number three, um, that it is a violation to operate a service not authorized by the certificate or uh, failure to comply with the conditions and limitations of the certificate. 12.54.290 states that a certificate of public convenience and, and necessity Horse-drawn carriage permit, carriage driver's license, or identification card is assigned to one person or company and is not transferable. Um, also, I apologize that my printer went down, so I was not able to make copies of these, but you can feel free to share them among yourselves. This is um, like just so everybody can hear me. You'll see that they have their own logo. This is a sign. Uh, for advertisement of the event. Again, their own logo, um, a screenshot of their social media page it says they support the event, not that they do it. Um, and this is the Hillsborough West End Nashville page. No mention of Sugar Creek Carriages. This is a brochure of the event. Um, again, these are Sugar Creek Carriages horses. There is no mention of Sugar Creek Carriages. These are all screenshots taken from Hillsborough West End um, website. There is absolutely no mention of Sugar Creek Carriages on any of it anywhere. Yes, you'll certainly 
get to ask those. Are you through with your presentation? Um, I would just like to respectfully ask our, our, our state that this company has been given, given grace after grace after grace over the past 18 years. Um, and that at the uh, meeting on November 16th, 2017, the commissioners stated that Sugar Creek carriages be held accountable for the actions of all drivers and employees. Um, I would just request that you would uh, consider that as you deliberate. What is, uh, before you get off there, what is 12-54-070 that you cited in your complaint? You got two ordinances, but I was just curious about the first one, 070. 12.54.070 um, states that the commission may place on probation, suspend, or revoke a certificate holder if it is determined that the certificate holder or any driver operating on behalf of the certificate holder has uh, failed to comply with the provisions of this chapter, operated as a service not authorized by the certificate, or failed to comply with the conditions and limitations of their certi certificate, and by allowing um, his permit again to be used by an unpermitted company, I would think that that would fall under uh, outside the limitations of the certificate. Okay, so 070 is the sanctions for a violation of 290. I believe so. Thank you. And Ms. Robinson, before we go any further, I do want to remind you, you're still under the same obligation to uh, as being under oath as you were in the first complaint hearing. Yes, sir. You may proceed. Uh, Ms. Robinson, you're aware, I assume, that if a carriage company wants to do some sort of event that's not downtown, that it is required to uh, uh, seek the approval of Ms. Marshall at Public Works. You aware of that? Yes, sir. Have you checked to see whether this uh, was sought by Mr. Smith? I did email Mr. Fields, yes, sir, oh, to you ask did? him. Yes. What did he say? Um, he said that not that he was aware of, but there is a company that operates mm -hmm. for Hillsborough Weston National Nash. Uh, Nash, whatever, <laughs> Nashboro, um, each, each Christmas time. Well, then you, you didn't see then the email uh, exchange between Diane Marshall and August the 28th of 2018, in which permission for the West End Neighborhood Christmas event we do every year, the routes are the same, mm -hmm. the dates, and so forth, and with her response being approval given. You've never seen that? No, sir, I have not. Have you talked to anyone uh, at the uh, Hillsboro West End yeah, Neighborhood yes, Association? No, sir. You not talked to Mr. Cash? No, sir. Did Mr. Uh, Fields share with you the, uh, the email that he had received from Mr. Cash? No, sir. He did not. Right. Well, let me share this with the commission. It's to Mr. Fields. It's dated January 16 of uh, this year. Mr. Fields, for seven years, the Hillsboro West End Neighbors Association, a 501c3 nonprofit. Mr. Blackburn, we do have this already oh, as have part of our record. Okay, thank you. Then I will refrain from reading it. Uh, <coughs> he, uh, he does state that, quite frankly, he's scratching his head at this allegation. This is a neighborhood event which uh, Sugar Creek Carriages has done for many years. It operates the carriages. It does so by contract. It's approved by Public Works. Uh, and the, um, the uh, president of that association has confirmed all of these facts to from the executive director. This complaint is frivolous. Mr. Smith, you're still under oath. Have I stated this correctly? Yes, sir. All right. Did you have a specific contract with these folks to provide services there? Yes, sir. With your company and your animals and your drivers? Yes, sir. All right. You've done this for many years, as Mr. Cash has said. Yes. Thank you. Anything further from you, Ms. Robinson? No, sir. Smith, I do have one question. Who provides the uh, drivers for this event? I do, sir. I okay. won't let a driver that's not permitted by the Transportation and License Commission drive my carriages. Okay. And they're my employees. Thank you. There's pictures of us. You can see us at the event. 
Well, I mean, I, I understand Mr. Cash is not here to substantiate his written statement to Mr. Fields by email, but um, there's no reason why we shouldn't consider the email um, as, as part of the as part of the record, um, even though it is hearsay. This is not a court of law. Um, the burden on Ms. Robinson is not to just present a scintilla of evidence, but to actually carry the preponderance of the evidence, which means that um, she only needs a scintilla of evidence beyond 50 percent um, in order to carry the preponderance. So um, based on what we've heard today uh, regarding um, how these holiday carriage tours are carried out, it does not appear to me that there's been a violation of 1254.070 or 1254.290. I feel like in my mind the email from uh, Diane Marshall is dispositive, so I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I thank you for producing that. It's very helpful. I'm pretty comfortable agreeing that there's no violation. I'll make I'll make a motion. I'd like to move to dismiss this complaint. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I would make a recommendation, Sugar Creeks, instead of saying you support the event that you put in there something, Sugar Creeks will be providing the rides. I, I couldn't hear you, sir. I, I would make a suggestion so you avoid any appearance of impropriety in the future that instead of just saying you support the event, that you're providing the rides for the event. Uh, I, I don't make the advertisement, but I'll, I'll let Mr. Cash know if he would make, a, make it known, sir. All right. I know we've got some more complaints uh, that we need to get to. I do want to take a matter out of order. Mr. Solomon has been sitting here patiently. Uh, and Mr. Fields had mentioned that he wanted to raise an issue with the commission, so I would like to let him come forward. I'll give you guys a break. <laughs> Good afternoon. Michael Solomon from Taxi USA. Here we operate Ally Cab, National Cab, and Taxi Taxi. Um, and we operate a significant number of wheelchair taxi cabs in our service, both under contract with uh, WeGo, MTA, and various other entities that use our wheelchair service, however. The important part of this is about um, rule number 32 in the rules, which I think I might have just read. The intent was supposed to be one way when they changed the rule about mileage on these vehicles, but it wasn't written that way in the rules. So as you found out earlier, there's something missing in the code. I think they forgot to put it in the rules, so my question might be moot. So it was our belief that you could have a maximum of 325 miles on a wheelchair taxi, but every other taxi can operate on the road eight years plus get a waiver if you want two times for an extra year or two. But a wheelchair taxi's life ends at 325 miles, 1,000 miles. And the wheelchair taxi costs $53,000, and the typical taxi costs seven grand. So at the end of two and a half years, almost three years, the wheelchair taxi's wasted. We haven't even paid for it yet. And uh, my suggestion is, in our fleet anyway, we use Toyota Siennas, um, and there is little to no maintenance on these vehicles to begin with, tires and brakes a windshield wiper motor sometimes. Um, but other than that, the vehicles run and, they're, and they have to be inspected every year as well. It's part of the code. So they have to pass a safety inspection. They have to be inspected by ADA. They have to be, uh, the driver has to be trained, all of those things. But I'm asking that when you have a chance to look at this and agree that we should take the, the cap off the mileage on these vehicles, because I'll tell you what's gonna happen in our case. Every other city that we operate in has no mileage cap on a wheelchair taxi. They don't even have an age cap. They, they want them on the road, they need them on the road. And because they're so expensive to own and operate, they have to not limit the access. When these vehicles get to 300,000 miles, they're leaving Nashville, and they're gonna go somewhere else to work. But I'm not gonna replace them. So the 20 wheelchair taxis that we have on the road, encompass of the 24, are ours. And there'll be no wheelchair taxis left at the end of whatever happens with this mileage cap. 
So you can read back in the minutes, I wasn't present at those meetings, but the commission and some folks just had this idea. But the, I read the minutes and it, with, with no logic or reason. But in those days, I will tell you that we put garage made wheelchair taxis on the road. We bought a Dodge Caravan for $8,000 and paid somebody $5,000 to stick a lift in the back. Well, that isn't the way it's done anymore. We buy a brand new Toyota Sienna van, it goes to Braun. They retrofit it and it looks like it came out of the factory. And it's certified by ADA and it operates with, without fail. Um, so things have changed over the years, the 10 or 15 years ago when they changed the mileage rule. Vehicles last longer, obviously. But from an economics perspective and the need of the public and the visitors to Davidson County, we need these vehicles to be able to stay on the road longer. From a timing perspective, how how uh, quickly are you wanting something to be done? Well, I want to, well, at the pleasure of you guys, you decide. Well, I guess what I'm asking is how close are you to 300? Well, we have vehicles that are, are getting to that place. And, but the, 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 I know the reality of life, but I, I'm just concerned that, um, and I think everybody should be more concerned that if we take these vehicles out of service, hopefully somebody else steps up. But we've found that not to be the case here over year. If we put something on next month's agenda, can you be available absolutely. And, and give us some something? Yes, absolutely. Or give us some testimony about it. Yeah, I can't imagine there'd be any opposition from any taxi company either. I, I, it, I guess I talked to Mr. Fields what too. What specifically would you be asking for? To, to erase the mileage cap and have the same cap that exists on all other taxi cabs that operate on the road. Which is eight years. Eight years. Yeah, yeah. eight years plus there's an option for, does anybody, I don't know if anybody asked for the waivers, but there's option for waivers. The code says in Rule 32 that you can ask for a waiver up to 325,000 miles. But beyond that, you can't ask for a waiver. So what I'm thinking, as I said when I first walked up, is the intent was to cap the mileage, but they wrote it wrong or miswrote it. I don't, I don't want to say anything to do what they're supposed to do. And they just put this language in here that you couldn't ask for a waiver. The writer's not present. I did not write that. Right, but if you, if you can read what I'm reading right now, now it just says you can't ask for a waiver in excess of 325,000 miles. But I know I read the minutes, and Ms. the minutes said the cap. We were to put this on, this issue on the for next month. Could you talk to Mr. Sullivan and give us a proposal? Uh, certainly, ADA taxi cabs are something that I've taken very seriously over the mm -hmm. years. In fact, uh, most people would say I'm probably <coughs> one of the champions to make sure we actually have them in, mm -hmm. working with companies uh, like Taxi Taxi to make sure that we have them. Whatever we can do as a commission to provide better transportation and mobility for folks who, who have challenges on that is, is appropriate. I think probably, and again, I was not present in 2005 because I was not working at the commission at that particular moment. I left in 2003. I suspect the conversation was about making sure it was safer. A newer cab, I mean, just because it's newer and fewer miles doesn't mean it's safer. What makes a cab safer is, is was it mechanically, is it, is it being followed mechanically? Is it being maintained properly? It's, it's not inappropriate to have this conversation next month. And certainly we could ask Mr. Solomon to bring, uh, uh, and, and all the tax cab companies and the public for that matter, to have a public hearing and, and bring testimony about the safety issues, uh, other city, how other cities function, and that sort of thing. And there's enough time to give, to be able to give public notice of the public hearing? Certainly, we have we have a, we have several groups. We have one one or two groups in particular that would I'm confident would like to have would like to be made aware of it of uh, the local ADA uh, community as well as the taxi cabs. And I think Mr. Solomon's right. I certainly can't speak for taxi cabs. I've figured that out over the years, but I would be very surprised if they had a problem with a uh, change of the rules related to when an a ADA cab comes out. We could also ask the, our ADA coordinator from Metropolitan Government if they have any opinion. But I think you might want to look at the section that I'm referring to, and I don't think it exists. So even though I brought it to the table, and section I'm sitting 32. here reading it, 32 doesn't yeah. say there's an age limit. But I know in, that well, in the meeting... Well, actually, what, it, it, what it does say, they're, they're, what he's referring to under, uh, under Rule 32, it says that a... Um, uh, it says the year model of vehicle placed in service for the first time shall not be older than eight. Uh, so it can't even start if it's older than eight years old. Uh, it, it typically, while there's not an upper age limit, there is an age limit that becomes 10 years, which is what the ordinance requires. So it cannot be any older than 10. 
under the way the code is written presently, and it specifically says under E3 that the vehicle uh, must not have more than 325,000 miles of odometer. In my memory, without chasing it back down, is 425. Or no, what? no, you're, no. What that's saying to get a waiver, it can't have more than 325,000 miles to go an extra year over eight. So the, the minutes to the meeting way back when, I think in I think 2014, was um, a 350,000 mile cap. Didn't matter how old the vehicle was but 350,000 miles. And we're putting 100,000 plus miles on these vehicles a year, the vehicle ages out pretty quick. I mean, for me it works out because I can move it. But for other companies, they're stuck with an asset that they haven't paid for. They probably still owe money and they can do nothing with it. I think we have time to make uh, enough public awareness um, and, and well as gather whatever information. And we certainly have taxi cabs who will provide information. All right, well thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you for your time. All right, next we'll take um, up the complaint from Ms. Kama Zuniga against American Melody Carriages. We also have, it looks like there's a, with respect to this next set, we might be able to take them up all together. And you can correct me if you think there's a better way to handle this, Mr. No, Blackburn. I, I agree, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, what this is about was that uh, she was operating, she was under suspension for 30 days. She went to Opryland and operated carriages that were not hers, and we believe they were. No, they were, they were her carriages. They were her carriages. They're her carriages, her horses. There was no signage on them, no lights. Doing it through Southern Comfort. Believing Southern that, yeah. Comfort has the contract. contract. And that's all this concerns the video. That it's a 14 minute video. I'm sorry, guys. Well, I all can we see. need to do to show the parts that show what you're complaining about. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, why don't you just uh, finish the first and you're still under oath a moment ago. Did you observe uh, Did you observe the uh, at Opryland in yes. December during the period of her suspension? Yes, on two different occasions. And what was she doing? She was operating and driving her carriage doing their light um, tours. All right. And, uh, we made these complaints, and this is before the ones that she presented against you that uh, were already addressed this morning. Yes. This yes. All right. Okay. So I went with my roommate, my best friend, who's pretty much my sister, and her mother um, to Opryland, and another friend on a separate day. Oh, is this Jennifer Snyder and Patsy Benham? Yes. I'm going to fast forward a little bit through it because it's 14 minutes. What day was this? This was um, the day after Christmas. And there's her carriage. I've seen it downtown, and there's plenty of pictures of her and her carriage on her American Melody <coughs> Facebook page. That would be Mr. Kenny Hale. He is the manager for Southern Comfort Carriages. <laughs> and right there, he just he tells Melody to hold up and wait for them to get on the carriage. You're filming? No, she was filming. You were filming this. I unfortunately did not ride. You did not ride? I did not ride. Okay. I did not go on the carriage ride. Sorry. 
recognize the name? Yes, I've seen the horse downtown. Who's is it? It would be um, American Melody to Melody Robinson. It's also on our website as well. And just a moment ago, she said something to the effect of nice ride Melody. Is that what I just heard? Yeah, she was. Yeah. Do you want me to keep playing it? It's 14 minutes long. Yes. yes. Uh, and you're Jennifer Snyder? I am. If you'll please repeat after me. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give. I swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. She said at the beginning, she introduced herself as Melody, and then throughout the video, she said that her name was Melody. Do you see the lady named Melanie in the room here? Melody, yes, right there. Okay. Sorry. It's just redundant. It's just the whole carriage ride. All right. So basically, I just want to make sure that I, I completely understand the scenario. Mm -hmm. Here is the previous visit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Miss Zuniga, you were not pre you did not go on the ride. No, but I was present there. You were present there. Uh -huh. And you uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Just tell me your last name. Snyder. Ms. Snyder went on the ride, and essentially, did, did you, were you guys out there essentially so that you can try to get this footage? No. Or you just happened to we, be out there? Her, and you, Her we, mom has cancer and is very ill, and they came out to visit, and she said, let's go look at the lights. We were going to, we had dinner reservations downtown, and we wanted to go look at the lights prior to downtown. And prior take her. You don't work for the carriage company. I work for Sugar Creek Carriages. So that's how you know each other to go downtown together. Go to the top of the room together. We have known each other for over 10 years. Ms. Snyder, where do you live? <clears throat> where, I live in Portland, Tennessee. So this was taken on um, about maybe what, December 17th. Oh no, this is the actual, I'm sorry, I lied. Um, the one from the picture when we were there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was sorry. just thinking. <laughs> sorry, I misspoke. That's, this is the one. Um, I've got so many pictures on my computer, and I've had a computer malfunction, and ha it had to be restored. So this is the from when they that I took when they were getting on the carriage. But they, we were also there on the 17th with some other friends that um, wanted to go and see the lights as well, because we had uh, mutual friends that actually are employed at Opry Land. And what you're saying is that Ms. Robinson's license was suspended her, her, during that um, time. Her certificate of necessity was suspended for 30 days, and she was operating her carriage, her horse. So, and it's inside of Davidson County, which you have to have that um, certificate of public necessity to operate. Also on this carriage, is, there's also no red rear lights or signage like per the ordinance, but we didn't add that in. Do you have any, is there a, a time stamp on this video? Um, do you have it on your phone? Is there a time stamp on your phone? Yeah, for the day when it was taken, because I have it downloaded to my computer. And I might have it on mine. Ms. Robinson, do you, do you stipulate that you were operating on December 17 with your carriage and your horse at Opryland? Yes, sir, that is my carriage, that is my horse, and that is at Opryland. I am driving it. However, my company was suspended, not my driver's permit, and my carriage and horse in there at Opryland are leased to Southern Comfort Carriage, of which he's done previously. Okay, then I have a question on this. Um, per the ordinance, says, when was the carriage transferred over and reinspected by the city and re-permitted, which it has to be done because your stuff cannot be crossed 
When was the horse reinspected and when was the insurance put in place for the carriage and your horses um, by Mr. Fields? Before we move forward, I would like to request that um, the complaint from Cam Zuniga, the complaint from Cam, Cam Zuniga and Jennifer Snyder, and the complaint from uh, Patsy Benham, our her room and it's misspelled on the agenda, would be deferred to next month as they have um, similar uh, content as the complaint from Nashville Animal Advocacy. Am I not allowed to defer something one time at least? No. Who are you to say that? Sorry. All right. It was well, not deferred by me. Well, Mr. Blackburn, we we have a a motion in in front of us. Um, we're going to uh, motions denied. We're not going to defer. Um. Did you actually want to see the timestamp on my cell phone? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I have the ones from some of the pictures. December 26th. She's already testified. She said December 17th, didn't she? The picture was from December 17th. The video was mm -hmm. from December 26th. <coughs> I was there with my mom and took the video on this day. Okay. Did you want to see the timestamp? No, Ms. Robinson's already stipulated. Ms. Zuniga, Ms. Snyder, do y'all have anything else to present at also, this time? I just have a question. Did you just not state that you lease your horses and your carriages to Paul? Paul Morrison is a certificate holder of public consumption so. and necessity. And, but I want to make sure that your your horses were transferred to him for that lease. Um, I have for the pursuit of to the ordinance. I have an audio recording of Billy Fields uh, telling me that that it is allowed, um, but that I just need to have something in writing, which I have. Under the regulations, though, it says it has to be reinspected and re-permitted. Also, I don't believe, and I'll defer to Metro Legal. And those are non-transferable. I'll defer to Metro Legal, but I do believe that it's not transferable. It is non-transferable. When you say it, What's it? The, what is it? Her. She's trying to operate under the authority of another company without that being disclosed to the commission or the commission granted by the commission uh, and she's doing this in order plainly to avoid her suspension also to let let you know on december the 13th in davidson county in um let's see at a funeral home on when was it December the 13th, 17th, um, you did a funeral in Davidson County, did you not? No, I did not. Um, according to the funeral home that I spoke with, and we have the pictures from it, and the name of the deceased, you did operate. So did you just not lie? And it's on your Facebook page. Okay, there are a lot of times where I post things on my Facebook page um, way later than I actually did them. Um, But that's actually yes, this not is what to, we're to sustain my complaint that she's operating illegally. Do you have that ready? Can you? What's the date of it? It was um, just the. I'm sorry. December. The actual funeral was done. Ms. Zuniga, uh, what, what are you arguing that is Did not you, uh, transferable? That the, her, care, her, her certificate of convenience is not transferable. Her driver's permit is non-transferable to another company. Her carriages are non-transferable to another company. Her horses are non-transferable to another company without being re-permitted. And she was on suspension in Davidson County. She actually did the funeral and operated on December the 17th. 
And what? Uh, what yeah, at, at a funeral. What proof do you have of that? I have. Um, we have proof of pictures that she posted. Also, we spoke with the funeral director at the funeral home in Madison, stating that he did hire her and she did do the event. We have the audio. And the um, Eddie's a witness to that. Audio of a conversation with the funeral director. Do we have anything about the funeral? Let's see, it's stuff on property land. No, it's the complaints are focused on the two dates, December two 17th dates. and December 26th. Other testimony showing that she's blatantly lying and operating in front of you on the 17th that she was when she was suspended and not to be working and operating. Does anyone want to hear the audio from the funeral director? I always like to hear the evidence, so yes. Mr. Garcia, please repeat after me. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give. I swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give. Is, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, so as Ms. Robinson said, the audio will bring up. The Facebook pictures, I was compelled to test her veracity. The eye patch of Trey Prelon, I can get close if you all would like. Can we do it next to the microphone? Yeah, the eye patch is pretty loud. from the beginning school. Nashville? 
sent me, and I hate this. This is pretty nice. Was that like in the middle of December, like the seventeenth or something? Uh, about that. Who, who's talking? Yeah. That's the funeral yeah. director, of Spring Hill. Okay. Is that the other person you? Who's the other person? Yeah, it's him. Me. You. That's that's pretty much it. That's where we discussed. Yeah, that's where he acknowledged that it was American Melody. He's Scott, the director of Spring Hill. Were, were you calling a, as a ruse, or was that? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Generally, gener I was genuinely. investigating. I have every right to call and ask to check to check. Just if that. Well, answer the question. What? what did in fact you were you calling on behalf of a friend? In Atlanta. Who dealt with the death in the family? In Atlanta. In Whether Atlanta. they were coming to Nashville, I don't believe were so. Were they planning to transport the body to Nashville? When I talked to them, they said he died in Atlanta, his family's from Tennessee, and we never got as far as whether they were going to bury him in Tennessee or not. Did the funeral director know you were recording him? No. Tennessee's a one-party state. So it's a surreptitious recording with a ruse of bringing a body up there to get him to open up and talk to you. I didn't, uh, I didn't trick him into giving me factual answers. Sounds to me like it was. No, it wasn't. I disagree. Without him knowing he was being recorded. Uh, it's a one-party state in Tennessee. I understand the law, but it's also polite to let someone in a business know they're being recorded. Under the law, I have every right to and record. And you did not, you were not up front with him telling him you're calling to find out who was the person that provided the carriage services for a previous funeral. I think that's irrelevant. The point that I wanted to make is that he Maybe hired... I'm asking the question because I think it's relevant. We disagree, Mr. McNally. The point that is factual that this, the director did Maybe confirm... Maybe it goes to your credibility today. And, and I see other heads shaking up and down. I could be an investigative reporter for WKRN and do the same thing. Why would that be different? But you're not. You're, you're a lawyer, aren't you? I'm not a lawyer. He's a lobbyist. So to, to get to the truth, I'm um, asked the gentleman, did this funeral take place? And he confirmed it. There's no trickery in that. It's a one party state. I don't have to announce that I'm recording a conversation. That's your opinion, it's no trickery. I, it looks I, like subterfuge to me. I think it's the law. And I know judges who would be very disappointed if they saw a lawyer do that to a witness I'm not a in lawyer. a courtroom. I'm not a lawyer, Mr. McNally. No, I think it was within insane. my right You're to You're in the same role it. investigating. Chairman, this is a subject that I do have quite a bit of knowledge of. I used to answer the questions involving wiretapping type things in the U.S. Attorney's Office. I have brought lawsuits on this whole matter. It is an ethical violation for us as attorneys to do this. So you and I would never do this. Actually, I, it's not. Well, I'm, In a criminal defense case, it's not. Well, I'm not a criminal defense attorney ordinarily. <laughs> Now, I know that uh, this is an old investigative technique that's used. I don't use it myself for the reasons that you're stating. Um, and I'm not uh, here to advocate or to defend this type of investigation. However, under Tennessee law and under the law of the United States, this was not a violation of any Mr. law. Mr. Blackburn, do you think we ought to notify the funeral director that he was surreptitiously tape recorded by I'm someone who was trying to gather evidence for a tribunal? Uh, I am indifferent to that. It makes no difference whatever. I I'm just wondering how today. that gentleman would feel today. Well, I don't know. He was not the target of any investigation. He merely supplied information. I suspect if we subpoenaed him here today, he would be truthful. Uh, if we have subpoena power, we can do that. But the fact is, is that she told you under oath that she didn't do this. And you've heard the confirmation from the funeral director, however sketchy the means was employed to get it, that confirms that she didn't tell you the truth. We spent a lot of day talking about untruthful testimony and the consequences of it. Now, unlike Ms. Zuniga's uh, testimony, in her, in her situation, the question to her was not material, and she later recanted it. There isn't any prosecutor in this state that would prosecute such a claim for perjury. In this instance, she made a false statement specifically to deny a claim being made against her that was under hearing this time, and it's well, false. Well, Mrs. Zuniga only recanted because it was, again, uh, convenient for her to do so to defeat the complaints brought against her by Ms. Robinson, which we uh, 
deferred the one against her personally, but it certainly defeated the one that was brought against Sugar Creek. Uh, but I, That's you know, true. I don't, I don't disagree that, um, it, you know, based on this hearsay testimony from the funeral director, uh, that it appears that Miss Robinson has just lied to the this commission um, that she did not operate her carriage at her funeral. Um, Would you indulge me to ask Mr. Garcia just a few more questions? Of course. Mr. Garcia, you've appeared here on behalf of Joyride, right? In the past. Okay. And you now have taken under an investigation on behalf of Sugar Creeks against Melanie Carriages. I wanted to challenge the veracity of her working or not working. Are you working for Sugar Creek? I am a registered lobbyist in Metropolitan Davidson County for Sugar Creek Carriages. Okay. So you are getting compensated by Sugar Creek? In the scope of being a lobbyist, yes. All right. And under, as that lobbyist, which generally speaking, a lobbyist presents things to the Metro Council or to this board or somewhere, you, you were a lobbyist for Joyride, right? At that point, yes. Okay. You're no longer associated with them? No. All right. Now, as a lobbyist, did your duty include investigating um, Melody? My role as a lobbyist is what I believe as a lobbyist is to do for my client. I would appear before the General Assembly, the City Council, your board, the Beer Board, Sexual Oriented Business Board, any board under... Who asked you, who asked you to do the surreptitious recording of the... That was on my accord. Project? Your own accord? That was your idea? Yes, sir. Thank you. She had pictures posted on her Facebook. I went up to the funeral home to take the pictures exactly in the same position of her pictures, and they match identically to the carport. And, and in I front just of the wanted to establish, make sure that I could establish that there's a relationship between you and Sugar Creek now. Oh, I don't think that's in dispute. I am a registered lobbyist for Sugar Creek. Thank you. Can I, can I make a comment? And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be out of order here, so please feel free to say that. But it, it just seems like there are a lot of unscrupulous business practices going on here between these two entities. And we're here week after week. There are complaints filed. There's inaccurate information, missing information. And, you know, I, 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 I got to be honest, I'm, I'm just a little bit frustrated with this whole process. No, I, I feel the same way. The, the um, testimony from Ms. Zuniga, now we have the testimony from Ms. Robinson. Um, neither one of them, in my opinion, appear credible. Uh, it's evident based on the complaint that Ms. Robinson brought against Ms. Zuniga and Sugar Creek, and now the complaints that they brought against Ms. Ms. Robinson and her company that um, that both of them will say whatever they need to say mm -hmm. in order to defeat the complaint in front of them at that time. Yep. And probably do whatever they need to do to try to get a complaint. Yep. From filming to surreptitious recording. And the motive the motivation just stinks. I don't see any real interest and concern about the public safety out there. It's to get at the other person. Tit for tat. And I think you're hearing what this board feels about these complaints now. May I add to that, Brandon? Yes. I'd just like to say to that, I viewed hours and hours of video. You all remember, many, many of you were here, when Miss Rogers, the former chairwoman here, was addressed by you, Mr. McNally, quite adamantly. How do we stop these frivolous complaints? And it was proven with clip clop that that was a frivolous complaint. We can argue whether the reality is frivolous or not. But you asked her, point blank, Ms. Rogers, what do you suggest? She said, well, you got to put teeth in it. And she went to go another route and you said, no, Ms. Rogers, what is it? And she said, limit up to five. When you file five frivolous complaints that are substantiated, some reprimand has to happen to that company. Time and time again, this company has misled this commission. And I can go into a timestamp of video. Ms. Powell asked Ms. Melody about the shoes. There was some recollection. Oh, I feel I did. At no time was she not standing next to her attorney. Mr. Highland had every opportunity to correct her, but he didn't. 
She knew she couldn't operate with shoes. She just chose to say, well, I thought it was my thought. Mr. Hernandez corrected her at the June meeting. No, it was your recommendation. It did not go to city council. That is the only body that's allowed by law to change that ordinance. She knew that. And if she didn't, she had bad counsel. In a previous meeting, 2017, standing next to her was Richard Tarrant, another attorney, who jokingly said to this commission, oh, she knows now because she's not only spent a lot of money with me, but she spent an hour learning the code. In his words, and I have the timestamp as well, she now knows the rules. That was in 2017. So the question whether she knows the rules or not, I think is, is moot. She does know the rules, according to her Mr. Tennant, her attorney. So for her to claim that she didn't know about shoes, that she didn't know about this, that she didn't, is frivolous, non-factual, and misleading this commission. And in my complaint, if we get to hear it later, I'll lead into that as well. Thank you. Uh, no, you can make more than than one comment. You have not had a chance to present your case. So you can come forward. I would like to uh, make it known that in 19 years of me driving a carriage, this is the first time I have ever filed a complaint against anyone to, is today, or the complaints that were heard today. Um, and yes, I did do that funeral. I don't know the date of it. I apologize for that. Um, so as far as me working at Opryland, uh, which is the complaint that is before us, um, I have written testimony or, or written agreement, as Mr. Field stated, was what was needed uh, between Paul and I. Um, I asked that these be deferred, but you denied that. Um, I have those on my phone. Um, I would have been able to print them off. I apologize. I. Um, I actually took them out of this folder because they were the, the same content as Nashville Animal Advocacy, which is deferred to next month. But I do have um, the written agreement between uh, Paul Morrison and I. Um, the contract with Opryland is with Southern Comfort Carriages. It has absolutely nothing to do with American Melody Carriages. I was not suspended as a driver. Um, my company, American Melody Carriages, was suspended not Melody Robinson as a driver. I have worked for Paul Morrison at Opryland um, many years, ever since he's had the contract, actually. He has leased carriages and horses from me in the past. Um, he has leased carriages and horses um, from other companies and other individuals throughout the years that he's been there to fulfill his contract. Um, I have emails. Um, which I also had printed out and took it out with the animal advocacy complaints from Elizabeth Howe and um, Carol Wheeler, who both work for Southern Comfort Carriages, who both drove that carriage and that horse um, and another horse of mine out there. They were paid by Paul Morrison of Southern Comfort Carriages. I was paid by Paul Morrison of Southern Comfort Carriages. Uh, he also paid me additionally to lease the horses and carriages. And if that doesn't convince you, then um, I also have pictures uh, that my horses actually had shoes on while they were working out there, which you guys know that um, I don't like to put shoes on my horses, um, but they had shoes on. Paul Morrison paid for the shoeing. Um, I didn't have anything to do with that. And he also would have been here to um, defend himself against the animal advocacy. He could have uh, testified to all of this as well. And he will be here next month, um, which is another was reason that, why I requested that Was that the gentleman that, that was sitting kind of a little bit behind you? No, ma'am. He does not have anything to do with my company. So you said you do have the, the lease, but it's on your phone? Yes, sir. Would you like to see it? Yes. Can I ask a legal question? Indeed. Can a permit holder lease their carriage and horses to another permit holder? Um, it's under 1254.050. photographs of my horses where he took them and had them shot and then sent me the pictures. 
he was asking me about having them shot. Um, so here's all of the conversation starting there. So you already know them. You already know them here, Jeff. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there's not a specific language that I'm aware of, and again, it could be here, and I've been rereading it over and over and over, that talks about leasing from company to company. Under uh, 254.050, it says that uh, uh, the commission director may approve additional horses, carriage, and drivers for certificate holders without approval of the commission. Uh, the commission must approve any permanent change. So that, that was the intention of that when we wrote the ordinance was to be able to allow other movement of carriages is, is my recollection in 2002. And that's been a few days since this was uh, was approved. But that, that's, that's my memory of it. Uh, so it's incumbent upon the accepting company. I mean, it's, it's, so it's possible, I guess. Thank you. So the answer is yes. Well, you start from a you start from the premise that if Sugar Cur Sugar Creek Billy would know at this point how many carriages they have and how many drivers, correct? correct? And then if you were to add on, I think that's where the assumption is that this this provision would kick in and say, well, if you need more than what we have currently on the books, you let Billy know. Okay. And Ms. Also, Robinson, what's the date of the communications you're having? These are text messages, I see, or I think that's what they are. Uh, do they not show a date? Well, they have, have a time, but I'm having a hard time seeing if it's an actual, what's the actual date. What? Did you come to your, when did you come to your lease arrangement with Mr. Marshall? That, uh, I think I can get the dates of the text messages that was received at that time. Um, also, the uh, Ms. Danica herself pointed out that there was no American Melody Carriages signage on the carriage. Um, so obviously it was not operating as American Melody Carriages. Also, Mr. McNally, it's a matter mm -hmm. of interpretation because it says the commission director may approve additional horses, carriages, and drivers. Um, so for instance, if, if a carriage company had five and they wanted to use two of theirs and three of someone else's, mm -hmm. they still would be within the threshold of five. five. Yeah. Um, so I don't believe that this provision, which if the gallery has a better provision that they want to submit, I don't think that that completely on its face mm -hmm. um, prevents. They only, they only carry, she carries two permit, Southern Comfort <coughs> carries four permit, and from what I've been told that there was no extra carriages permitted to be out there. But they were operating eight carriages. But they were operating eight carriages that night. The question has always been, again, I was not advised of any of that until just this moment, is how many were operating at the same time on the street we we do allow vehicles to come off in other words you could have 10 that but you can only if you're if you're permitted for five you can operate five on the street at one time so in other words you can pull them in and off i think they'll all agree that because it's all about we've had that same issue come up with the pedal carriages right so the question becomes how many were in full operation at the time and i can't answer that but also the question is involved was the carriage re-inspected by the commission by the TLC to be put under Southern Comfort um, permits as well as the horse, which it states that you have to do. What's that code section you're quoting? Uh, hold on a second. Hold on. I think it's, there was eight. And I'm bringing up a picture. What's her name? Melody Morris? Robinson. Yeah, Robinson. Robinson. Miss Robinson, I, can I, I ask you a couple quick questions, please? Yeah, I did. Let's see if I understand your defense. You entered into a, a lease agreement with Paul Morrison? Of Southern Comfort. Of Southern Comfort. For them, for him to be operating your, your carriages and your horses. Yes, sir. And you, did you, did I hear correctly, you say you informed Mr. Fields of that? Uh, I did not inform you Mr. Fields of that. You did not Fields inform Mr. Fields. No. You just entered into this lease agreement with Southern Comfort and then went ahead and did it. I would have um, assumed that that probably would have fallen under Southern Comfort Carriage. No, just uh, but you didn't notify anybody. Though. I did not, but I do okay. have a recording stating and that. how many horses and carriages did you give to Southern Comfort? He was using two of my horses and one of my carriages. Two horses, one carriage? Yes, sir. Okay. Who did he hook the, other, the extra horse up to? His own carriage. Okay, thank you. Oh. How, were you out there that night or on those evenings? 
I believe we did check the calendars and um, I believe that Paul Morrison said that I was driving on those uh, evenings. Okay. Yes. How many uh, carriages were operating on the avenues of Opry Lane at the time? I honestly have no idea. Oh, come on. If I had to take a guess, um, I know that he uses less during the, on the weeknights, and I don't know what night. I think it was the 16th. I don't know if that was a Saturday or what. But Well, now you would recognize your horses, right? Yes, sir. You would recognize your carriage, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Were, all, were the two horses in your carriage operating? I don't know if both of my horses were, but they could have been. Okay. Do you think there were more than four carriages that night out there at Opry Lane? Uh, like I said, he uses less during the week um, yes. and more on the weekends. When so. you were there, do, do, you, do you have any recollection of how many carriages were operating? There were probably, if it was a Saturday, yes, there were more than four carriages. It's Thank a you. Sunday. Sunday. Well, she said the 16th, and I, I thought that previously we said the 17th. The 17th so and the 26th. 17th is a Monday. So 17th is a Monday. The 26th was a Wednesday. So we had two weekdays. Six to eight carriages operating. And you you counted that, or you have that in in your? Well, I've, I've got a lot of pictures. I didn't bring the whole video card because we were, I was taking pictures of all the carriages out there, so we could give them to her mom, so she would have that memory on my my camera. It was not. They were not taken on my phone. I have two observations. One, I'm relatively confused about the factual basis of everything, and two, a little uncertain as to the legal grounds to be applied to these facts. <laughs> I think um, the leasing of the vehicles and the operation of the carriages is one issue, and I think Ms. Robinson being present is another issue. It seems to me, and I just want to tell you how it seems so that I can, so that maybe you can dispute this, that you leased your carriages and your horses to Southern Comfort so that you can kind of uh, usurp or get around the fact that you were suspended. Is that, is that, not, am I not, am I, if I'm missing something, please let me know because I'm, I'm going to make a decision based off of my understanding of the circumstances, but when, you know, when we boil it down to the least common denominator, were you or were you not leasing your horses and your carriages to this uh, this outside company to get around the fact that you were suspended? No, ma'am. Um, if you remember a few minutes ago, I stated that he has leased my carriages and horses in the past and carriages and horses from other companies and other individuals as well. So this particular instance, not talking about in the past, this particular instance right now has nothing to do with the fact that you were suspended? Not at all because actually um, uh, we looked up the date between our text messages which was um, the conversation was began on October the 29th, 2018 so that would have been prior to my suspension. Okay, so you, you had this in place this, this agreement prior to the, to your suspension and it just so happens that in the meantime you got suspended and you carried on with your original plan that was discussed previously is that yes. correct yes ma'am okay. and for a point of clarification what I was just speaking to Billy Fields about um, when she received her suspension it's our understanding that the motion to suspend her was to suspend her certificate and that she as a driver has a has her own permit and she has a, a certificate of as an op, as an owner okay. operator as well okay. I don't know that that was the intent I think <coughs> by saying and I'm obviously I can't I can't say what your intent was but when you said a suspension of melody carriages I'm not sure you were in, you intended to split hairs um, and say well just her company but not her like she can't continue to work um, 
but well, I just think it's an important distinction to make. Yeah. I think that when we did, when the motion was made, it was only for her certificate. So that is a that's a factual. Would her suspension of her certificate uh, for mel uh, American Melody carriages would that carry forth to prevent her company from uh, providing services in a private funeral? Within Davidson County, yes. And just for clarification, the date the funeral occurred, was she suspended? Yes. Hold on. I, I mean, in other words, I, I know when the commission was meeting was. Mm -hmm. I know the action that was taken. If the funeral was between that date and 30 days later, then it would have happened. Do we have a fact of the funeral date? Uh, pictures on Facebook as the date as well as Mr. What, what is the date? Uh, December 17th. Uh, December 17th. Miss Robinson, were you suspended on, was your company suspended on December 17th? Um, I believe the meeting was on December 13th, so yes. Okay. And I, I don't know this for sure, but I thought we were suspending her permit to operate the company, not to prevent her from driving so she could still make some money. That's why I said intent yeah. matters. Okay. And if that was the motion, then her ability to drive for another company would not be hindered. Right. And, and regardless of the intent, the, the only thing that was, it was just a certificate for Melanie, American Melanie Carriages Correct. that was suspended. Which is why I wanted to point yeah. that out. If, if it were that you had taken away both, then I think this would be clear. But the operation during the funeral on December 17th would be in violation of our suspension. Right, but, it, but it's also not before us. Right. Well, I don't That's think it has to be. No, but I, I um... Again, it's like the unfolding yeah. of what happened with Ms. Zaniga. Right. Um, okay. Uh, if, if I can, a point of clarification, uh, Ms. Zaniga handed me what she was referring to, uh, and you can interpret it. I'm just telling you what it was. This is 12.54.260B, uh, and it says, No carriage engaged in the horse-drawn carriage business shall be driven or operated on a public street or byway of the city unless the owner or operator of the carriage has obtained a valid identification card issued by the commission director pursuant to a procedure and fees established by this chapter. So I think the point she was trying to make was that the, uh, the, the permit goes with the carriage. So if you have another company utilizing a driver mm -hmm. whose permit to drive is associated with another uh, company, that's a violation of that provision, the carriage and the, uh, the animal presumably could be leased to someone else who had a certificate as long as they're within the number. I think that's the point she was trying to reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Under American Melody, be transferred or leased to Southern Comfort. I don't have money. Wait, 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 w
when, when you had been just suspended? I apologize. I didn't even think about it because it was um, for a funeral home. I mean, it, it had just, you had just been suspended three days, four days before, and it, it just, it just didn't occur to you? No, ma'am, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not used to being before the commission this frequently. However, obviously I'm a, a prime target for whatever reason. Um. Yes. Ms. Robinson, you were suspended on December 17th by this commission four days earlier on the 13th? Yes, sir. And you understood that suspension, right? Uh, yes, sir. And you understood it was your company's certificate was suspended? Yes, sir. All right. And you've admitted that you were operating during the, uh, funeral, the funeral procession that we've discussed here today on December 17th? As I said, I don't know the date, but apparently that was it. Okay, and you earlier had denied that you had provided a carriage service for that funeral, right? She asked me if I did it on a certain date, and I, I, you, you I don't remember. Uh, please, well, she, she please. actually date. asked you, was that in December, and you said that sometimes you post on Facebook in a very delayed fashion, so you weren't sure. And that's what you said. Yes, sir. And please, don't equivocate or try to split hairs here, okay? you made it at least the appearance of saying that you did not operate for a funeral service, right? Yes, right. I did do the funeral and for Spring And you're admitting Hill you Cemetery. did do the funeral now? I did do the funeral for Spring Hill Cemetery. Okay, and we heard the recording today. Yes. All right. Is there anything you could possibly add to change the facts of that, that you were operating while you were suspended? No, sir, I have a heart of compassion and they called and wanted, uh, someone wanted a funeral case on and. If we were to give you more time, is there anything you could say or add today that you were not already said? Possibly. What? I don't know. Okay. Ms. Robinson, uh, you're going to be hearing from Mr. Fields, and he's going to notify you in writing uh, that we're going to possibly take action uh, against you. And so we're going to have a show calls hearing why we shouldn't take action against you and your company. Um, you'll have an opportunity to be heard at that meeting. Uh, before the imposition of any probation, suspension, or revocation. So just to be clear, this is um, not about Opryland, this is about the funeral? Correct. Okay. Just for the benefit of everybody, apparently we are required to give notice in writing of complaints and proposed actions. And would it be fair to say we probably cannot act on the violation of operating during the funeral home today? Well, I, um, twelve fifty four point seven, excuse me, twelve fifty four point zero seven zero is entitled disciplinary action. And, um, there wasn't actually a complaint brought today, uh, against Ms. Robinson or her company in regards to operating uh, at a funeral while she was under suspension, although it came up in the context of another complaint by Miss um, Zaniga uh, and Miss Benham regarding Miss Robinson and American Melody Carriages operating at Opryland. And in the course of that presentation, we heard proof that Ms. Robinson and her company were also operating at a funeral. Um, 
that's relevant to the veracity of the defense that's brought by Ms. Robinson and Ms. And, and her company in connection with the complaints about the operation at Operaland. But it is, it is out of an abundance of caution, because we don't want to overstep our boundaries here, um, not a complaint brought before us today, and certainly not a complaint that she was aware of that was going to be brought before her today. So the section that we're reading from is 12.54.070C. Uh, and it's basically, uh, I'll read it. Uh, prior, and, and, and it's, it, it says, the commissioner director shall notify the certificate holder in writing with a notice of the proposed action to be taken and the general basis for the proposed action along with a show cause <coughs> hearing date before the commission. The certificate holder shall have an opportunity to be heard by the commission before the imposition of any probation, suspension, or revocation. Now, I believe through questions that I've presented and, and Mr. McNally and others on the commission, we, we have given an opportunity to be heard uh, to Ms. Robinson, uh, but she has uh, also stated under oath that she might possibly be able to present other testimony or, or evidence uh, in her defense, and so we're going to afford her that time. Um, do you think we could put this on the meeting for next month? Yes. Thank in, you. In light of that, I would make a motion to defer a decision on all the other complaints against American Melody Carriages and Miss Melody Robinson, given that, uh, uh, and, and combine them with the uh, the anticipated show cause hearing on whether she violated the uh, suspension or not. I think because it may influence our decision if any sanctions have to be taken. I second that. Is that all of them, including the Garcia and the Patty Benham? Benham? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just. Yes, that's include all of them, and also we'll be hearing from National Animal Advocacy next month as well, which has a complaint against American Melody Carriages too. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Mike. I'm getting sidelined here from my valid complaint. I may not be here next month. I don't know. I can't tell the future. I have a valid complaint. It's on the docket. I asked for the commission to consider hearing that complaint. It has nothing to do with my allegation that she operated while suspension. The allegations that, that she's violated sections of 54. So they're nothing to do with an allegation that she operated. So I'd ask the commission to hear my complaint in case I can't come here next month, then I'll ask for another deferral and this could in perpetuity just continue on. And I think that's what the commission wants to avoid. So I'd ask respectfully if the commission can hear my complaint. It's only 411. I don't think it'll take too long with my evidence. Thank you for your consideration. Um, we have a, we have a, a motion, um, a modified motion rather, uh, I haven't heard a second. I will add that the complaint brought by Mr. Garcia uh, does involve uh, an incident uh, in January, dated January 27th. That would be outside of the suspension of American Melody Carriages. So it does appear to be a distinct set of circumstances apart from the other, what we've currently been dealing with. Actually, I'll withdraw my motion and allow Mr. Garcia to present his proof. I may want to renew the motion, though, before any decisions made on it. That way he'll have an opportunity to present his proof and he won't have to be here next month if he doesn't want to be here. So I think we need a new motion regarding uh, deferring uh, Ms. Zuniga, Ms. Snyder, and Ms. Benham's complaints. Make a motion to defer those until the next meeting when we're taking up uh, the anticipated show cause hearing on American Melody Carriages. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Motion passes. Next we'll take up Mr. Garcia's complaint. Thank you for your indulgence. 
as Mr. Hernandez says, this complaint was my, from my observation, and I understand I'm still under oath, uh, three allegations in violation of the codes that are in the complaint. Uh, I have pictures on my iPad. Um, I think the flip side of the complaint, I have cited the three 54 rules. Um, this occurred on 2nd Avenue in front of Wild Horse Saloon and or Famous Saloon, where I observed the first instance of 200. Uh, let, let's skip, let's go to 260, where the carriage Miss Melody was operating stationary in front of uh, several signs, taxi cab, it's the drive, we all, if you want, want to pinpoint it, it's the driveway that's between the Hard Rock T-shirt store and Famous Saloon. It's the driveway that goes egress to Hard Rock. I didn't include the pictures because I couldn't get it to print, but they are here. This is her carriage, unequivocally her carriage, because she's, there's no sign on it. It does have the emblem for safety, but it has no identification sign. It's in violation as I said, of 1254-260-C5. Uh, as it pertains, and we can probably argue, we probably don't have tonight. There's always been an issue whether carriages can use loading zones, unloading zones, and that's something I've asked traffic and parking to clarify. But I think the understanding goes without saying that a long period of time stationary in that specified designated zone is not allowable. Her carriage was there, I witnessed it for a period of 14 minutes on my cell phone. There was no loading, there was no imminent loading, there was no imminent unloading. It was clearly a violation of just being stationary without proper signage on a carriage that was operating on the streets of Davidson County. Then shortly thereafter, <coughs> in front of Luke Bryan's saloon, her same carriage. This time, there's a sign on it. Albeit it's slanted and whatnot, but I think it's a little larger than the rules in 54 specified for the dimensions of it. That, I'm not here to differ about that. But now there's a sign on it. That was about 22 minutes after. So clearly she was in operation of a carriage, in my opinion, unlawfully in a loading zone. There's no passengers loading or unloading. She had no signage on it. And if I can show you that picture again, if you didn't see, it was dusk. And the rule says that your lights must be on. She had no lights on. If we look at the pictures, all the vehicles adjacent to her carriage had their lights on. Now, whether the vehicle's automated lights are on or not, but it was dusk. I don't think we can refute that point. So there's three violations. Yes, it was after the period of her suspension. And I'm going to reiterate what I said before. She's had two occasions, two attorneys, clearly telling this commission through great pain, laughter, and expense, she knows the rules imposed by this TLC on carriage owners. This is her constant excuse. <clears throat> I don't remember, I can't recollect, I'm sorry. To echo Ms. Rogers, and I feel the sentiment of this commission, you all need to put an end to violations or you're just gonna see complaints on and on and on. I suggested to Mr. Field to eliminate frivolous complaints, to add a, uh, a requirement that they be notarized. But I understand, I've sat in your shoes and in other jurisdictions as appointed member of a, of a public committee. You really don't have time to hear all these complaints. And I echo Ms. Powell's, it's, it's, it, and I, I'm not the only one. Mr. Highland has said it, Mr. Blackburn has said it, Ms. Rogers, all of whom are our attorneys. We need to put this to an end. Um, but, I, but I'd like to offer into testimony, and if I could ask, I guess I could ask Ms. Robinson after. There are two occasions that I'll probably have an opportunity to bring him up. They'll be more germane. Thank you for your time. Ms. Robinson. Uh, on this day, I had just pulled in to feed my horses. It was 12 o'clock noon. I got a phone call asking me to do a ride downtown. Um, I initially refused because I knew that this would happen. I knew that I knew that there would be more complaints. No matter what I, I did, I knew that it would happen. So she explained that her daughter had been very sick for a while, <coughs> recovered, gotten sick again, 
had recovered and was, um, they had been downtown the night before to something at uh, Bridgestone Arena and seen the carriages, actually Sugar Creek carriages, and they would not uh, allow them to ride. The, the mother was uh, saying it was too late to ride that night. So she <coughs> was um, saying that the daughter had went, gone to sleep, talking about wanting to ride the carriages, had um, woken up, talking about going to ride the carriages, um, and that the mother stated to me that she was just so excited that her daughter was excited about something, that was, she was feeling well enough to be excited about something. Um, and that's my heart, is to do this for people and children who want to be blessed by it. This is not my desire to be before you guys over and over and over again. So, I reluctantly agreed to go and do the ride for them. I remembered everything except for the sign, which, as we discussed earlier, had been removed because my carriage had been used at Opryland, not as American Melody carriages. My friend Charlotte, who works for me sometimes, um, actually came down to help me get the horse ready and to be a support because she knew as well as I did that they were going to be following me and videotaping and photographing everything that I did. So I asked her if she would go back to my property. I told her where the sign was and asked if she would go and get it and she graciously did. Um, however, instead of making these people wait to begin their ride, I went ahead and started. They actually met me at the place where I prepared the carriages and horses and got on there. So it's um, on Fog Street. And they rode into town with me. Um, I knew that Charlotte wouldn't take long to get it because I don't live far from downtown. Um, so we got onto Broadway and the mother said, my little girl needs to use the restroom. So in my head, I'm thinking, this is great. Now I'm going to have to pull over somewhere. And they're going to video and, and photograph and turn in a complaint. But what do I, it's a little five-year-old girl. What do I tell them? No, you have to do this one-hour ride. You have to hold. You know, you can't, I can't let you use the restroom. So I'm thinking in my head, where can I pull off? Where it's out of the way. I'm not taking up a carriage stand. Um, and where they can get easy access to a public restroom. So I pulled over at the Hard Rock Cafe into a loading zone. Um, I checked the time on my cell phone when I pulled in because I knew that they would be timing it and recording it. Um, I actually pulled in there at 4.11. They got off, went into the Hard Rock, used the restroom. They came back out at 4.21. So it was exactly 10 minutes. Um, and then we proceeded with the ride. Charlotte met up with me um, at 425 and tied my sign on very quickly, which is why it was crooked, um, so that we didn't have to delay the riders longer than necessary, um, and again be pulled off on the side of a street. Um, this was a one hour ride that she asked me to do because, like I said, initially I didn't even wanna go down. Um, and I reluctantly agreed to, but I told her it would have to be at least a one hour reservation or ride. Um, so she agreed to that gratefully, very gratefully. Um, <clears throat> at 520, I was pulling back into our uh, preparation area and, and unloading them. Um, I did realize that it was getting a little dark um, and Mr. Garcia states that it was nearing dusk, um, but I was at the corner of 4th Avenue and Broadway about to turn down um, 4th to head back to the lot. And I flipped my switch on and the, the lights were dim. So, um, I mean, what do I do? Do I stop right there in the middle of Broadway and 4th Avenue and switch the battery over? Um, I was headed in, so that's what I proceeded to do. Did, did you operate, was your, was your carriage being operated on the 26th? 
what I don't I have no idea I don't know whatever date that he says this is which is the 28th between August I believe 8 of 2018 when I told you guys that I had not been back downtown um, until this date I have worked downtown for one hour and this is it so all the other dates were at Opryland uh, and the funeral, apparently. I guess. I was at Opryland um, in December. Right. So, so were you operating at Opryland in January? No. Um, were you operating um, as American Melody Carriages in January? Yes, sir. I was off um, suspension at that time. Off suspension, what, January 13th? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. It was a 30 day suspension? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so you're at that point in time in January, you weren't leasing your carriages, right? You were operating them under American Melody carriages? Yes, sir. That lease was only through Opryland, which ends on December the 31st, I believe. A moment ago, you, you testified that your sign was removed because you had been leasing your carriages and that's why the sign was missing? Yes, we had taken it off um, because as, as I stated before, um, it was leased to Southern Comfort Carriages. But you just now just stated that it wasn't leased, it was, you were operating it okay. as American Melody Carriages and that the lease ends on December 31, correct? Mm -hmm. It was leased to Southern Comfort Carriages during Opryland. At that time, we took the sign off. I did not intend to go downtown anytime soon, as I actually just emailed Mr. Fields that yesterday. Um, this lady called and pleaded with me to go down and explain the circumstances. Um, I had not at that time replaced the sign back onto the carriage. But you were operating in Opryland during the month of January, I was, right? no. Where were you operating? You said you hadn't been downtown, but you were operating your company in January. Where were you operating? I said that I was between August 8th of 2018, or August sometime, August of 2018, until this date, which this complaint, um, the date of this complaint, I had operated downtown, actually up to the present. From August of 2018 up to the present moment, I have operated downtown for one hour and this is the one hour. So from August of 2018 until January 27th, the date that this allegation is made against you, that's the only time you've been downtown, it's January 27th. Uh, I believe it was the 28th, but yes. Again, I think I want to, maybe I'm asking too technical of a question. Were you operating as American Melody Cares <coughs> at all elsewhere aside from downtown in January? No, sir. Okay. So from December 31st to January 27th or 28th, you didn't operate anywhere? No, sir. And that's why the sign wasn't on the back of the carriage, because you had you weren't operating? Yes, sir. How? All right. I had to take on another job because, I mean, who wants to go down there and face this? just for I mean like this shows it right here I was downtown for one hour and this is what I got from it I mean we were working at Opryland we weren't even downtown they had the whole downtown to themselves and look at what they have brought before you they sought us out at the funeral back in December on the 17th did you have your signs on your carriages no sir how come it's a funeral case on it's it doesn't have a sign. It actually, it states in the uh, uh, ordinances that there, uh, okay. that signs, you don't have to have a sign if it's for a, a special event or, or something along those lines. Uh, I believe it says special events such as a wedding or fun funeral. So, other, other than, did you have you worked other special events then, in this time frame? You're talking August to January 27th. The only events you were working were special. I did a funeral in January 
um, and I also did, I had two special event bookings in February, yes. So a funeral in December, a funeral in January, and two special events in February. Yes, sir. How do you think Mr. Garcia thought you were downtown on the 27th or 28th? It, it does say in the complaint, I think January 27th is Sunday, which that is a Sunday. I guess the complaint uh, was turned in on the 28th. Yeah. But yes. How do you think he knew to, uh, you, you said you anticipated he would be, somebody would be down there filming you, video you. What, how do you think they knew you were going to be down there? That seems to be the million dollar question. Can I answer the million dollar question now? No, I'm asking her right now, please. I'll let you answer it though. You'll get well, your let, chance. Yeah, I'll let it. Thank you. I would suspect that either they uh, called him and uh, it appears that they're obviously watching me and following me and um, I, I seem to be a, a person of especially great interest to them for whatever reason. Like I said, I seem to be a very prime target and I'm not sure why. Well, they certainly are investigating you. They're checking your Facebook page out. They're checking your, your carriages out and they're checking funeral homes that are on your Facebook page. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, isn't it nice to be so popular? downtown as a citizen has no bearing what Mr. McNally is trying to allege and I take offense to that. I was at a bar with friends. I happened to see a carriage. Unbeknownst to me because there was no sign on it, I found out it was her driving it. As a citizen and to enforce these rules and as this commission has once and many many times said, you all are self-policing yourselves. Yes, we are. Because unlike cabs, Ubers and Lyfts, there is no policing. There is no it happens with the carriage industry. That's why it behooves traffic and parking in this commission to really enforce these rules. The abuse on the carriage stands and other things, but that's not, so that's the answer to the million dollar question. I was there because I was having drinks. Um, I'm very- Where were you having drinks? That's irrelevant. No, no, I want to know your- I, I had a drink at Hard Rock. I want to know your proximity to the place of where she Hard was Rock, located. Hard Rock, Big Bottom. Hard where? Rock and Big Bottom Brewery. I think I may have stopped into the distillery. I'm not sure. They do have good margaritas. And where did you observe her carriage? In front of Wild Horse Saloon and in front of Famous no, Saloon. Where were you located when you on observed Second her Avenue. carriage? Coming around the corner on 2nd Avenue. So you were walking on 2nd Avenue at the time? Yes. All right. Um, I'm very empathetic to her compassion. But are we going to allow people to break the rules because of compassion? They're set there. If they followed the rules, then you wouldn't be scrutinized. Plain and simple. Follow the rules. Time and time again, this particular carriage company and its owner has violated rules, and it's got to stop. If you're going to enforce it and show the other carriages we mean business, you have to start at some point, as Ms. Rogers said. But this carriage company has violated rules, too. Uh, we're not here to discuss that. Okay, when I, there's I a complaint just, on that, then we'll address it. I agree with you. I don't want it to seem like she is the only one violating the rules. No, that's fine. But she's the only one that's always come up with excuses to mitigate her violations. In every instance except today, and I'd like to ask her some questions, if I may. Ms. Wait, can I just ask you, I, I haven't been here that long, but sh I thought she said that she hadn't been before this commission until this time or these no, last she's, two times. She's been here several times. I haven't, com I haven't, I haven't turned up in complaint. any complaint. Oh, you haven't made a complaint. Anyone. You've just been complained on. Yes. I see. So, Ms. Robinson, if I may ask her, other than today, and I think last month, at every other time that you were here to answer a complaint, were you, were you appeared by counsel? Uh, yes, I believe so. Do you remember Mr. Tarrant, your attorney? 2017? 
that's not his name, but yes. Richard Tarrant is not his name? That's what's on it's the video. Uh, Pennant, actually. Okay, well, maybe I misspelled it. And Mr. Highland has been your attorney. Yes, sir. So, during the debacle of the shoes, would you tell this commission, did Mr. Highland correct you or tell you that you must wear shoes? Or, again, your testimony in the past under oath has been, or maybe not under oath, that your recollection was that this commission approved the, the, sh the not using the shoes. Is that your recollection? Yes, you can look back in the many meetings. And oh, I have. That, that is so Mr. Tennant, as you corrected me, when you spent hours and money with that attorney to correct you on the rules in 2017. What does this have to do with anything? You because just, she, You just said talking about them has nothing to do with this, and now you're talking about something from two years ago. That because I'm trying to, to prove that every instance she has misled this commission or has claimed that she doesn't know. The rules are written, and you expect the carriage owners, taxi cabs, wreckers to know the rules. I think we should hire you to enforce scooters downtown. Don't even get me started, that Ms. Palmer. <laughs> but she's just, she's just constantly been using that as a scapegoat. I didn't know. I didn't know. She has counsel at every time. So whether we go into whether the counsel was derelict or not, that's a whole other ball of wax. But she knows, and she should have been advised. She's paying counsel. Mr. Garcia, is this going... Hold on I, one sec. Are your questions here going to yes? The, um, hold, hold on. Are your questions here going to suggestion of a of a sanction for violation? Absolutely. Rather than trying to prove a violation. Oh, absolutely. Otherwise, we'd be wasting each other's time. I would. This is another instance right where she has violated the rules over and over and over, and you all have reprimanded her sometimes with a slap on the wrist, suspension the last time, which. Finally, just put some teeth into these codes, as Ms. Rogers asked you. So, All right, I, I think we've we've heard. Thank that. you. Okay, leave it. <laughs> I. I uh, I just want to say that I think the complaints that are being brought before the commission by the carriage companies are a complete and utter waste of our time. Complete waste. Both sides. I agree. They, they go on and on and it's evident that based on statements from Ms. Zuniga, based on statements from Ms. Robinson, that we're, we're not getting truthful statements presented to us. Um, we're hearing from Mr. Garcia uh, that he will um, gather evidence surreptitiously uh, in order to use against um, the party that his client is complaining against. While I understand that might not be uh, illegal, it just it bears to the links that each of these companies are going to to try to get the other into trouble. We, as a commission, uh, I certainly uh, don't believe that the Metro Council, when they formed our commission, believed that we would be. Um, having to hear complaints like this. Mr. Fields and I have struggled in trying to come up with a way to handle these complaints in an efficient manner. The only thing we've been able to come up with is to actually bear them out and just grind through them in our meetings. Um, I, I would like to make sure that the research that our legal counsel is doing uh, with respect to what we can do to Mr. Uh, Ms. Zuniga and also the show calls uh, letter that's going to Ms. Robinson, I would like to make sure that I would like to know uh, that we have the power to bar them forever from operating as a driver and as a company. Uh, in Nashville. We obviously need to address the complaint by Mr. Garcia.
He's alleged that she did not have proper signage. Ms. Robinson has admitted that she did not have signage and that her friend Charlotte went back to go get it, but proceeded to go on the tour. She also, Ms. Robinson also explained that she did have to pull off uh, in front of the Hard Rock in a loading zone uh, to allow uh, a minor passenger to go use the bathroom and that it took approximately 10 minutes. And she also admitted that at the end of the tour, after it was over, um, the lights in her carriage were not operating sufficiently, and, but because the tour was over and she was going back in, she did not replace the battery. Um, I'd like to get some discussion from others on if they believe that that's sufficient to find um, violations of our, of our rules. I'm not sure we have sufficient uh, proof of, of uh, a violation with respect to uh, pulling over in an unauthorized spot. Um, the proof to me is that she, she did not, um, she was not pulling over for the purpose of uh, soliciting rides or awaiting a ride. She was actually in the midst of providing a ride. Um, And certainly, the proof that she's present that Miss Robinson's presented uh, evidence is that uh, there was uh, good cause for her to pull over. Um, what does the the rule say with respect to pulling over at a passenger request to go to the restroom? There's no rule on that. If we require following the rules of the road, I mean, that'd be, that'd be the same. But in order to do that, it'd take a police officer to actually take action because we have no authority to take action over rules of the road unless something's a ticket or court action has been taken. There's also the doctrine of the defense of necessity, and uh, a person's allowed to trespass on another person's property when they're pulling out of a storm. You know, their boat can dock at their dock when they're trying to avoid a storm. Uh, I would say if there is a violation of a rule, the uh, child's need to alleviate, uh, to, to use the restroom uh, provides a reasonable defense to any minor infraction of a, of a traffic violation. Um, and then I have a question about the lights. Um, and I have a question after you. Okay, my question about the lights is the testimony I've heard it was nearly dusk, I've heard it was coming on dusk and whether the does the code or does the ordinance require that lights be operational unless it's become dark or a certain point it's from dusk to dawn when the weather when inclement weather dictates all I heard so far was nearing dusk and she tried the lights and they were dim but only when in inclement weather dictates um, no, no, or, or, or not or, and right or not carriages not. carriages lights must be lit from dusk until dawn or when inclement weather dictates what was your question um actually my question is for mr garcia um so and please forgive me it's a little bit hard to read this the scanning didn't make it very clear but in in your attachment it says eddie garcia a citizen of Davidson County observed, and mm -hmm. it goes on from there. Mm -hmm. And citizen is looks to be underlined and bold. And um, it, it's <coughs> almost as if you anticipated that we were going to ask the question that you did. And I just want to make sure that in no way you, you just, it, it is just pure coincidence that you were out at a bar and you were not on retainer for this company at all 
you, you were not operating on behalf of this company at all when you noticed that she was downtown with her sign off. No. I'm on retainer since I filed <clears throat> shortly after January with Davidson County for lobbying. I was down there with some friends. And, and I'd like to expand a little bit on that since because I purposely underwrote it. There have been many, many times allegations made by members of this commission that it's always people, drivers against drivers, filing complaints because unfortunately we have to self-police. There's no other, otherwise this is gonna continue in perpetuity. That's why I'm imploring that you all do something to stop this so your time isn't wasted and Mr. Field's time isn't wasted. It doesn't happen with cabs or records. Unfortunately, it's just with carriages. But I did that because I wanted to be clear, unequivocally clear. I have a right as a citizen to file a complaint. And in the past, it's always been said, oh, it's just this person against that person. I'm not a driver. I'm not a carriage owner. For, for laughs, I'm an independent contractor. I'm sure Creek Carriage, I do get a 1099 as a lobbyist. So you registered as a lobbyist for Sugar Creek Carriages after January 28, 2019? No, in the beginning of January. Huh? In the beginning of in January. In the beginning of January. So on January 27th, you were employed by Sugar Creek uh, as their lobbyist. At the beginning of the, of the month is when I registered. So the answer is yes. I'm still employed as a lobbyist, yes. Okay. So when you just answered her question that you were a citizen and you were still engaged with Sugar Creek as their lobbyist. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, are you alleging that on the evening of the 27th, 28th, I was doing lobbying services for Sugar Creek while I was downtown with friends drinking? I, I, uh, I'll speak for my, myself. I, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I, I personally feel like the, the practices that you used with the funeral home were at best unethical. And I, you know, I just want to make sure that you are being 100% honest and truthful and clear because I have reason to believe, based off of things that have transpired today, that your ethics are in question. That's your opinion. Uh, I'm not bound by ethical rules. I'm not an attorney. I'm a political consultant. We can all get into discussion of who's occupying the White House as to ethics. I can do run campaigns, I research campaigns, I exercise any method within legal means. Recording the funeral director is not illegal. Acting as a driver, uh, as a passenger, is not illegal. If I observe an, Ill an illegality taking place, whether it's by a wrecker, a cab, a carriage, a golf cart, an Uber or Lyft, I have a duty and I'm compelled to bring it forward. So if you're insinuating that my retainer as a lobbyist on this evening, I was being paid my compensation, I take, I take great offense to that. I so happen to be were. downtown. And so you, Pardon me? How much are you getting paid? Uh, that is between me and No, it isn't. Uh, Tell me. I don't have to disclose that. Yeah, you do. I don't think I do. Sure you do. That's a private contract. Are you refusing to answer? That's a private contract. Okay. Uh, well, I think we should dismiss your complaint. Then... Ask me what, uh, tell me on what basis do you have the right to know what my income is? Goes to just your, your, your hired gun. Your credibility, gun. your bias. Well, your credibility I will bias. refer to the filing that I did with Metro, Metro, Metropolitan Davidson County that does not require me to disclose my income. I move to dismiss the complaint by Mr. Garcia against American Melody Carriages. I second. Clear you all, all show, those in favor? Aye. Clear you all show deference to one company over another, and that's sad. There's no democracy. We're clearly not showing deference. You are. Both. You're Ms. dismissing my complaint because I'm hey, failing to answer my question. I'm talking right now. Both Ms. Zuniga and both Ms. Robinson are showing up next month under show calls as why they shouldn't be barred forever from this industry. So please sit down. Your complaint's dismissed. Do we have any other business, Mr. Fields? Nope. We, we do have one oh, issue of a oh, driver was moved to the hill. Mr. Porter? Mr. Porter's not present. I moved to dismiss. What was the, uh, what was the request? Yeah, an application for, uh, and, and it was deferred. Wrecker and towing services. And it was deferred from last month. We deferred from last month. All right, I moved to dismiss the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. I have no other business. Move to adjourn. I second. I'm sorry.